not changing. I keep repeating, there's one figure that stands out for me, Rahul. The BJP got around 7.5 crore votes in 2009. It went up by a whopping 200% to over nearly 22 crores by 2019 in a decade. The Congress vote has remained relatively static at 11 crores. So while we are looking at the BJP and the big picture of Mr. Modi you know, winning his hat-trick, we've got to also look at the Congress party. And I think somewhere... There no, are but it's not static. There. If the pie is growing up in your your That's portion, right. say you're actually you're declining very badly. Voters. So you're not static. See, your, you're declining. Your vote share is remaining static. For a no, moment, and before we kickstart our if discussion, you're, if you're let's take you through how this same. stacks up in terms of seats. We've looked at the vote share numbers. Let's take a look at how many seats each of these parties is projected to bag. The BJP, remember, had a 3 not 3 rifle that they were firing last time. This time it's 304. So it's not Mission Teen So Sapta. That's his rallying war cry. They're, they're not there yet. 304 is where they stand. 71 is where the Congress uh, stands, which is up 19 from the last time. Remember, there are gains in states like Telangana, uh, which are helping the Congress to better than it did last time. Others at this moment are at 168 down 20. So that's where it stands. Prime Minister Modi very comfortably placed to be PM once more, which is why Raj Chingappa and his team are saying it's get set for a hat trick. Raj, you want to give us what your headline is? What is, is it hat trick? Uh, is it the Modi uh, momentum? What is it? It is. Set for a hat trick. <laughs> so, is, is it about Modi? Is it about the BJP? Uh, how do you see it? I, I see your cover has Mr. Modi imperiously walking. So we're down calling it Raj heading Ma for the ha heading for a hat trick. But let's you know just for a moment look at the figures that are there. Yes. I mean it's commendable that Mr. Modi in his tenth year is able to deliver the kind of numbers to the BJP and the NDA. And look at the term that he does it. In the second term, I mean, every world leader was under pressure, put on the mat. There was a once-in-a-century pandemic that was there. You had a, a co complete collapse of the economy. You had uh, China, the Chinese intrusion coming in. You had two wars, uh, the Gaza and uh, Ukraine. Ukraine war that pushed up inflation. Everything could, that could go wrong goes wrong. And yet, when we see at the end of... Uh, 10 years, Mr. Modi is not only shining, but is up there in the league of greatness, possibly statesmanship that is happening. So I think we have to give him credit for what is it. Now, whether he's going to beat the record of uh, uh, Nehru, that has to be seen, as, but the polls indicate that. Whether he will beat the record of uh, uh, Rajiv Gandhi in 1984, that is to be seen, because 400 at the moment from what uh, uh, we took in these last three hours, three or four bellwether states the NDA seems to be holding, but not really, uh, 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 you know, uh, catching up to the 370 that we, uh, uh, Mr. Modi wanted. I think what we, will, what we will see in the next two months, there will be, I believe, because the, the, the way it is trending, and I studied what we did in 2014, when Dr. Manmohan Singh was aspiring and the Congress party was aspiring for a third term. If you looked at our uh, Mood of the Nation poll at that time, in January 2014, the Congress was down to 100, and uh, the UPA was down to 122 seats. And the BJP, the trend line was that the uh, ND and the BJP was going to win it. Here, it's just the opposite. The ruling dispensation is doing it. So I would think that we are going to see a Modi wave because they can only get better from here. They seem to have equaled what they've done, and we're going to see this it's huge movement. There are caveats, which... We will come to the that. caveats yeah. in a moment, but... Is that how you see it? The big takeaway is the BJP has consolidated, holding its own. If anything, Yashwant Deshmukh, it could go up possibly in the next two months, depending on the nature of the campaign, the kind of momentum that you tend to get, that the winner gets a kind of bandwagon effect. Well, uh, bandwagon or not, uh, I have I've explained the relative turnout thing, which I think will be a very decisive factor. Because I believe within the same vote share and sphere, just the higher relative turnout will give BJP extra 2-3 point jump. Just by virtue of being able, organizationally and resourcefully, taking the supporter from their home to the polling booth. Out of that. Having said that, you all know that from the seat projection perspective, I am a very, very conservative pollster. For what Raj is indicating, what Amitabh is indicating, probably is, you know... They are poking me 
that yes, one, this is the starting block. And I agree to that because when I look into the gap of 20% vote share for the BJP, Rajdeep, it's like it is likely to end up a complete sweep in many of the states where marginally I have probability wise given two or three seats to the others. So if you look into the 335, it can easily be 350 just by taking into the other sweeping stakes of the BJP. So, so is there any caveat at all, Rahul Verma? Is there an inevitability of the outcome, as I said, where the question now remains whether the BJP is where Yashwant has pegged them at 303, NDA 335, or does the BJP go up to 340, 350, NDA 370, 380? Is this, are these the only two scenarios you see, or is there a possibility of a 2004 miracle that the opposition is holding on to? In Indian politics, there, are, there is always possibility, but the other term I'll use is probability. The probability of this now turning uh, in a reverse direction is very, very low. And see what is happening in some ways, just to sort of like add to what Rahul was saying. PM Nehru in his successive elections, 52, 57, 62, Congress vote share did not improve. What is happening with BJP, 31, 37, and now projected is 40, uh, four months ahead or uh, three months ahead of election. And given if it's a conservative estimate, uh, BJP being an organizational party can actually pick up more votes. With that kind of vote difference, the seat translation is going to be heavy. I and second point, Congress is holding on to its 18% vote share and 70 seats because of its perhaps uh, uh, performance in Telangana and states like that. And we don't know what would conspire in some of these states if BJP ties up with Say BRS, Telangana seat tally might change. What happens to the Congress party, uh, uh, Rashid Kidwai? Three consecutive defeats, 15 years out of power, and while they may get 70 seats as, as per our poll, that could even come down to 40, 50 if the BJP goes up by 20, 30. Where does that leave the Congress party? Can it hold together with a third debacle? Yeah. I think, uh, uh, Rajdeep, uh, it may sound a bit, uh, bit odd and bizarre, but the Congress would be very happy to uh, know Yashwanta. Uh, Deshmukh's, you know, uh, finding and mood of the nation that Congress is getting 71 Lok Sabha seat. It will give them a formal position of leader of opposition in the Lok Sabha. <laughs> Remember, Congress is very easily satisfied party and that's the one reason why it is going down. On the other side, you know, when Bharat Jodo Yatra, and this is a very big lesson for Rahul Gandhi, when Bharat Jodo Yatra was started in first phase, it was thought that the, with that Yatra, uh, Rahul Gandhi, would, uh, Congress would be able to increase, uh, you know, its uh, vote percentage by 3 to 4 percent. They were actually uh, hoping for 25 percent. So it's a very bad news that Congress is not getting vote percentage, no increase in vote percentage. I think individually in states, there will be breakaway Congress factions because nobody wants to be in a position forever. You know, Amitabh, your big takeaway from these uh, numbers, clearly it shows two months before the election, uh, perhaps, as I said, more than any other election, a dead certainty as to who the winner is. I can only compare it with January 2019. January 2019, which is the best comparison to make, the Congress had just won three states in North India, and the poll suggested a tightening of the contest. The India Today mood of the nation actually suggested a tightening of in the fact, contest. A coalition government for the NDA. A, a potential coalition government for the NDA. Now we are seeing a clear majority for the BJP. What's your big takeaway? Is Indian politics heading towards some kind of a dominant party system or is it about Prime Minister Modi being this domineering leader? So BJP is of course attaining the poll position which Congress used to acquire during the 1950s to 1990s. At that point of time, Congress was competing mostly against regional parties. Here we have BJP competing mostly against regional parties because regional parties uh, uh, tally is 168 seats. BJP is increasing its vote share. Congress is holding on to its vote share and all its gains are coming at the cost of regional parties. In fact, in fact, the story, Rahul, for me is again, once again that. that remember, 186 seats, roughly 186 seats, direct contest in 2019, Congress versus BJP. Congress won just 12. BJP won most of those seats by double digits. Nothing has changed. It's almost as if the Congress is where it is comatose in a way electorally and the BJP is growing and no, because they're not listening and, and, and the other factor which is also in a way worrying is the north-south divide the BJP dominating North India dominating West India dominate, doing even very well in the east it's only the south which seems to be marching to its own beat you know, and I wonder what the implications of that will be long term if the Congress had any good sense 
and I'm not at this moment certain that the people who do are looking so obsessively at this election in the way that the BJP is. They should sit into a room, Messrs. Kharge, Rahul Gandhi, Uddhav Thakre, Sharad Pawar and say, let's thrash out the Maharashtra seat sharing formula before we leave. Sit from morning till evening, go seat by seat, thrash it out, compromise and do the same for Telangana, figure out who your candidates are, get on the ground, instead of just spattering your ammunition all over the place, focus on their... No, folk, but they're not even invited, Rashid. That's the problem. Each no, no, of those leaders are saying... Because Rahul Gandhi is there, so they need to... But what, okay, is, more, I, no, what, what, is, what, what is more important, sitting and fighting and trying to win the few seats you have an opportunity of winning, or this yatra which only See, seems I, to be causing can trouble... I, can, I, can, I, can I make an even more controversial point? Right. Which is what? If I was the opposition today and I saw your numbers and the mood of the nation and all of us predicting the inevitability or the probability of the outcome, I would actually see one opportunity and that is focus on state elections. There are going to be, look, there's a Lok Sabha election which the outcome seems inevitable. It's about whether... No, but we, you cannot, if you're in the opposition, you cannot take it my, as inevitable. No, my, you have to fight the election. No, no, you have to fight. Can, uh, that's why I said yeah. it's a contentious and point. He, I would put my, I have 100 rupees in my pocket. I would put at least 80 rupees of that into state elections. There's Haryana, there's Maharashtra, there's Jharkhand, there's Bihar next year, then there's a series of other elections. Look, in the Lok Sabha, you can pick up Give, I'm only going by the mood of the nation, uh, uh, Rahul. You can pick up 20, 30 seats by what you're saying. Better seat adjustments, do a little bit in Maharashtra, work out your numbers. You should do that. Of course you should. Every election has to be fought. But when I look at the priorities, my uh, concern for this kind of opposition is that they seem to not even be able to pick up, get their act together often in state elections. Maharashtra is a good example. There's an election in Maharashtra in September, October. You win Maharashtra. You're, you, you know, you lift the morale. Imagine what happens if you lose Lok Sabha badly and then also you uh, suffer a debacle in Maharashtra and Haryana. Eventually, and, and don't forget, Karnataka, the government could be on notice given the yeah. kind of numbers that we are showing. Telangana, the Congress has a small majority. So, you know, the Congress Mukt Bharat or an opposition Mukt Bharat is in a way a reality if these numbers hold on. I would say focus on state elections, get your act together and I agree with you. At the moment, you should be sitting across a table, working out seat sharing, working out some kind of plan. I don't see that, which is why I think Yashwant has underestimated the BJP. My numbers are, I did my own polling, 340 plus BJP, 370 plus ND Alliance. I'm not ruling out even a bigger number than that. Yes. That's, that's the way I see it. I believe that the opposition is totally no, but despondent. Rashid Kidwai, are we seeing a phenomena similar to what we saw during the Gujarat Assembly elections, where because of what Rajdeep is saying, because of what others in the opposition seem to be thinking, the opposition just gives up the fight. Like the when I travelled through Gujarat in the last Assembly election, the opposition, the Congress wasn't even in the fight. AAP was trying to put up some fight. See, it's a self-perpetuating prophecy. If you don't fight, your opponents do even better. The BJP ended up with 154 out of 182. If the Congress had fought harder on every seat in every region, they may have done better. You give up the fight thinking, you take what Rajdeep is saying seriously, say because the opposition takes what he's saying very seriously. If they start taking what he's saying seriously <laughs> and not fighting this Lok Sabha election no. and preparing for the assembly election, no. jitna bura pitting, usse aur pit jayenge. Too late, too late. You see, the biggest problem with this opposition in 2024 is there is no sense of ownership. There is regional parties and there is Congress. When you talk about Congress, there is an official AICC president, Malikarjun Karge, and there is a, you know, uh, Rahul Gandhi who represents the political leadership of the Congress. Now, each, you know, person... <laughs> so what does Karge represent with, then? He is a Congress president, but he, he, he lacks that kind of, you know, political leadership. That's what I'm saying. There is no sense of ownership. Not and political leadership, tragedy. political authority. He's not been yes. given the no, political but, uh, authority. Uh, can I just come in yes. at this point? Take, take a look at the opposition. If, for instance, the Congress, if it had won one state in the north, exactly. Madhya Pradesh, where it was, uh, you know, anti incumbency was clear. So it was so close to actually turning the election. Because if you go, go back in, in, in the year that's there, firstly, you win Himachal in December. Then you come back and win Karnataka. I'm talking last year. You have the India Alliance being formed at that particular point of view. You knew where your battles were. Okay. This is the difference between what the BJP does, which knows that these three seats were critical for them to get the momentum to win the Lok Sabha. Easily the story could have turned. And the okay. mistakes the Congress started Sanju making... Sanju Verma is with us and Radhika Khera is with us. Sanju Verma to you first. I hope you've got some 
laddus and some mithai for Yashwan Deshmukh, Raj Chingappa, mm -hmm. and everybody else over here because it seems that the Raji. prime she minister. She won't give me. Raji. She won't give you. She won't give me mithai. No, she just said you were doing a great <laughs> job when you were trending. She should give you mithai also. Now, three zero four. After ten years of being in power for the BJP, three thirty five for the NDA. You know, it seems no matter whether you get to four hundred and three seventy or not, the outcome of the next election seems to be heavily skewed in your favor. Yeah, you know, uh, Rahul and Rajdeep, there's this famous saying by Norman Vincent: "If you shoot for the moon, you will at least land among the stars." So whether it's three seventy or four hundred or three thirty five, what have you? Point number one: BJP is romping home with a massive majority all on its own. Point number two. You know, I remember uh, that famous interview uh, with Prashant Kishore a few days back, where Rajdeep kept asking him, "What is the secret sauce around Brand Modi?" So I have something to say to the Congress: "Ham to jeetenge hi, but Congress ke jo samarthak hai, ye dhyan se suniye. Jo jaan kar bhi anjaan bana rahe, usse dard kya batana? Jo jaan kar bhi anjaan bana rahe, usse dard kya batana? Abhi magroor hai wo, khud mein unhe kyu hosh mein lana? Abhi magroor hai wo, khud mein." उन्हें क्यों होश में लाना एहसास तब होगा उन्हें जब छोड़ कर जाऊंगा एहसास तब होगा उन्हें जब छोड़ कर जाऊंगा फिर नहीं होगा मुमकिन मेरा लौट कर आना फिर नहीं होगा मुमकिन मेरा लौट कर आना दी वोटर्स कौन छोड़ के जा रहा है अरे भाई साहब वोटर्स ने छोड़ दिया है बट राहुल गांधी रिफ्यूज टू लुक इन टू द मिरर एंड गेट अ रियालिटी चेक बट नाउ आई विल स्पीक विथ हार्ड नंबर जस्ट बे विथ मी For 20 seconds. Of course, how you go on? You you throw a poetic Radhika. punch, Radhika Khera. I don't know how good your shyri is. She's thrown a poetic punch at you. That's a bit of a googly. Can you come back on the spur with a counter? Let's see. The numbers aren't favoring you, but let's see how good your shyri is. Go for it, Radhika. <laughs> Uh, see, uh, I'm sure that these numbers are a disappointment for the Bharatiya Janata Party spokesperson because uh, their claims of "up ki baat 400 par" have gone down over here itself in your survey. But coming back to that, I feel that surveys are not actually showing the true picture. The true picture is what I have here. I'm sorry, I don't believe in shyri and all because we are not here for entertainment. And India today is for talking about hard facts. Hard fact: today's newspaper which says, "Kisan karenge aaj Delhi ka coup." This is the reality of the country today. The reality of the country today is that a uh, that a wrestlers were sitting outside protesting, and they were what were they given in return of the protest? Latia. The this? reality is that the entire country is dealing under inflation, unemployment, poor law and order. While Modi ji no, 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 goes no, no, and pats no, no, no. himself on the back. I did not speak in between. So no, I have a scar. Come on, come on, Sanju Varma, you must you must allow her to speak. No, no. But please put down Sanju Varma's voice. You must allow her to speak. We are a democratic country, and India today is a democratic channel where you cannot mute my mic, and you will let me speak. You cannot control the opposition over here. Well, coming back, the country is watching how uh, so over 100 parliamentarians were uh, suspended for parliament because they were raising their voice. Country is watching everything. Country is watching how uh, governments are being uh, brought down, being scared uh, by the ED. Parties are being broken down, and new fractions are being then come. Country is watching everything. Yes, there have been disappointments that we've had in the recent uh, elections in Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh, and uh, uh, Rajasthan. But all surveys were predicting that Congress was winning Chhattisgarh. And I'm um, you were Rajdeep. You even visited Chhattisgarh. The mood of Chhattisgarh was absolutely different on the ground. But something okay. has happened. So I don't okay. think that the. So I want to go back to Sanju Varma. Sanju, you know, while the overall picture is very rosy, or, or should I say, there are lots of lotuses in the overall national picture, and they are blooming. Maharashtra is a concern. Telangana is a concern. Uh, having an alliance in Andhra Pradesh, potentially even Punjab, is a concern. And the way that the BJP has been operating, my sense is that they may be looking at these states where they are not doing well and trying to double down and figure out how to make the tactical arrangements to do well here. you know i will answer your question uh, and now i hope the courtesy will be extended to me uh, ruling party ke pravakta ka mic mute nahi kiya jayega you know radhika kehra i agree with her on one thing she said this is a serious channel we are not here for entertainment i completely agree entertainment to rahul gandhi de rahe hain bharpur entertainment as part of his bharat jodo nyay yatra delhi se stuff mein koila dalo aur stuff jal jata i thought that the stuff runs on kerosene or fuel for the first time i learned that the stuff runs on coal So please don't sit here and give me your uh, half baked knowledge. Now I will come to the hard facts. Rahul, I will not even talk about what uh, you know. Uh, Mr. Arun Puri said in August 
these are famous quotes of his which i really love reading them all over again on every debate in august 2023 after your then mood of the nation poll he said narendra modi has pulled off what few leaders have he has banished the universal factor of anti incumbency narendra modi's popularity rankings defy the law of gravity i'm quoting mr arun puri ad verbatim and i'll tell you why jahan narendra modi khade ho jate hain wahi se line shuru ho jati hai because we had a uh, you know uh, votes or number of seats at 17.6 crore in lok sabha 2014 people said you know ye to this was just happen stance we got the number of seats winning seats at 23 crore votes 23 crore people voted for narendra modi in 2019 which means there was a 31% increase in our winnable seats between 2014 and 2019 now i am not even going to assume that bjp will see a 3% uptick in its vote share from 37 to 40% as rahul said let us assume that the vote share continues to remain at 37% it does not rise to 40% and being conservative despite being an and the bhakt and a modi bhakt despite having a vote share at just 37% just going by past track record if you extrapolate the numbers you will see 30 crore people voting for bjp assuming a 31% rise in number of seats and okay, if you so you, just a so you made that point ma'am i want to go across the table ask uh, amitabh what could be the x factors from here we're in the beginning of uh, february uh, we've got march still to go and then elections in april may what could change good bad for both the opposition and the government see x factors for the bjp clearly is the mood of the neutral or the undecided voters from now on because bjp clearly has the momentum the numbers are very strong for bjp 335 nda means if you add the reverses in maharashtra and bihar which is 25 seat itself 360 plus you have a new ally from andhra pradesh possibly 176 377 so mission 400 or 370 is not impossible that's number one this is largely predicated on the image of prime minister modi so if there is a black swan event which dents the popularity of modi that is the only event which could probably tilt the numbers in favor of the opposition it's all about modi his popularity he is getting the votes for the bjp and he is the difference between the but this opposition is an important point touching up that it's essentially the no matter who thinks what of it the fact is and you can quantify this and we'll do this tomorrow but if the bjp is winning in the way that it is it's because of one man and what this country thinks of one man what anybody on this panel thinks of that man is inconsequential the voters who we've spoken to would like prime minister modi back they have a direct connect with him they have faith in him they trust him they want him back well let's call it brand modi that is really a phenomenon that has happened and if, and just uh, look at what amitabh said even in adversity he comes out the winner you had pulwama which is a black swan sort of event that happened in the thick of election he converts that into Uh, a great opportunity take a look at a second term each of these things covid his first castigated our polls itself show that it do, uh, goes down comes back uh, you know uh, with a bang make sure that the economy is uh, growing takes care of the people on one side then let's also look at the see i, I think there are a couple of qualities we have to look at uh, mr modi decisive leadership article 370 goals early in the tenure that is there ram temple built at terrific speed the parliament house built it women's reservation bill put there so you are seeing uh, if you take a look at some of the characteristics of leadership vision he has it he's not only showing a vision for these next 5 years he's looking you know many people could say well that's you know really pushing the target too far but he's giving a, a, a nation an aspiring nation a road to uh, development and i think that's very important so he's he's able to balance the hindutva sentiment which is the cultural sentiment that you want or the soul of the nation with pragmatic uh, governance decisive leadership and this you know this quality that he demonstrates in terms of welfareism as, as well so he's taken all the planks of the opposition appropriated all of them made it his own and has really that is why you think the kind of and he's building rajdeep a new republic whether anybody likes it or not very different from the nehruvian idea of india in the last 10 years and he'll cement it in the next 5 if these numbers are correct he has in front of our eyes built a new india look 
as I said, the Prime Minister is a consumer politician and it isn't easy to hold on to your popularity over an extended period of time, particularly when you've gone through several black swan events uh, over the last decade. That is a given. You know, I like to use sort of M factors and I'm going to give you seven, each of which I think it's not just Mr. Modi's secret sauce. I put Mr. Modi at the top. I put machine. The BJP is a machine. And the machine... No, they so, built a machine. You mean built a machine, no, no. you think like it's a machine lying no, on the ground. No, no, Anybody can do course, machine, they built a machine. Of course they built a machine, but the machine has various aspects to it. The machine knows how to use state power, it will know where, you know, when to corner the opposition. So did how the Congress when they were yeah, in opposition. So, I, I, so did the Congress. Sure, of course. But the Congress didn't build the structure that the BJP no, no, built. When you say that, you know, Mr. Modi is building a new republic, I just want to give the elements I think that are yeah. important as to why is he still winning. There's Prime Minister Modi, consumer politician, knows how to use power. There's the machine of the BJP, the RSS, the Sankh Parivar. There's the message. The message, interestingly, look at Mr. Modi's message in the last month since Ram Mandir. He's not focusing on Mandir, he's focusing on Vixit Bharat, talking about infrastructure projects, talking about Amrit Kal. Cleverly knows how to change the goalposts. This is over, let's move on to the next. So the opposition doesn't know what will come next. Number three. Number four is money. Let's be honest, Indian elections, the, the oxygen of Indian elections are increasingly money. The BJP dominates that space like no other party has done. The Congress may be in its pomp, but that time, you know, the opposition was much weaker. No, no, but that time the Congress leaders, many of them pocketed the money themselves. This is different structure. That, that, they are getting for the machine. A lot of the Congress leaders, sir, and you know this sir, well, pocketed sir, it's for not themselves. as if in Maharashtra we don't have Kokeki Rajniti. Let's not say that, no, you but know, we Institutional corruption in the manner in which there was under the UPA. That's not the case. The right jury now. is out on that, but I'm willing to concede that the Prime Minister has made it, uh, uh, you know, ensured that the party comes first at the very top. Not in the case of the Congress, individuals came ahead of the party. Then you have Mandir. I think as, as the survey is also going to show, Ram Mandir has taken the Prime Minister's own popularity to another level. That's where it comes that, you know, you're crafting an, a new ideological republic in a way, moving away from the Nehruvian idea to a, to a new idea of a new republic. Who knows, uniform civil court comes next. Then, and I think this is crucial, you have the Mahagadbandha. You see, you're as good as your op opposition is. If you're playing a terrible opposition, which is so badly divided, which has really made no effort, to actually build on the weaknesses of the government. It's not as if the government doesn't have weaknesses. Unemployment is a problem. The, a survey also shows that. What have you done to build it? You have had four meetings of the India Alliance, all in five-star hotels, or three of them in five-star hotels, one in Patna where Nitish Kumar, your convener, has gone. You made no effort to capitalize when COVID uh, management was going wrong to build a kind of consensus. We need change. You've not offered me a leadership or a narrative to combat Modi. I think that's an important element. You're as good as your opposition is. Finally, and I know, Rahul, this is contentious, the media. Let's be honest. No one has dominated the media space quite like Mr. Modi is. So we've never really questioned, for example, the misuse of the ED in the way that it should be. The poll also shows a number of Indians believe the ED is being misused. So I think Mr. Modi is Teflon-like. All of this comes together to make him almost impregnable, uh, pregnable. And I think, you know, credit to him, it's not easy in today's world to be as popular in 2024 as you were in 2014. More popular. Say, more popular. More popular, you can say, but it's a combination of various factors. Your popularity is also dependent on how unpopular the other side is. No, but that's not Modi's fault. It's not if a his opponents thought. don't know how to bat and bowl, how Rahul, can you blame Modi for that? Rahul, who's blaming Modi? I'm giving the reasonings. The no, reasoning sure. is the opposition in the last 10 years has had opportunities. Demonetization was an opportunity. COVID was an opportunity. You had the chance to question the government in a serious manner. Each, as this poll is showing, the regional parties are holding on to their own. But the Congress has been unable no, to rediscover so, itself. So the question will also have to be asked on Rahul Gandhi's leadership at some stage. Surely, uh, you know, yes, uh, yes, yes. Uh, you know, this poll, the how problem, long is the Congress going to sort of protect him? I think the biggest problem that uh, the opposition is facing is a face. You know, who Modi versus who? Is it Malikarjun Kharge? Is it Rahul Gandhi? Is it Mamta Banerjee? Is it Arvind Kejriwal? So people have no idea. Is it M.K. Stalin? Is it some other, you know, chief minister? So, you know, nobody knows. So therefore, Mr. Modi is having it, you know, very easy. And the survey is indicating at that. If there was a face, if there was a, you know, sort of caste affiliation, if there was a issues, talking points attached to it, perhaps the outcome may not have been very different, but there would have been something like 2019-like situation. You is know, he so invincible? 
I mean, at, at this point way, of time, at, at this point of time, say, can we say that Mr. Modi's invincible? Could the opposition have done anything better to change the mood of the nation? Maybe a better uh, word is unstoppable. Mm, yes. Uh, could see, it have, what there, could it have done? There is always a possibility, but I think of politics structurally. And the nature of politics is such that opposition does not have many chances. To use a cricket analogy, if, uh, say, it's Tendulkar or Virat Kohli is in full form, no matter you ball a Yorker or you ball a uh, uh, sort of like, uh, you know, a googly and spin, they will hit you. But uh, Tendulkar so, has no, got no, gold. And this, got is why, this is why leaders are important. But yeah. think of 50s and 60s politics. Were there no leaders in opposition? There was Lohia and other things. Could they challenge Nehru and Congress party? No, because in political time, now you counted seven things. Everything is in favor of BJP, yes. right? So at the moment, I don't think uh, uh, like there is any X factor. The only X factor could be that we have no sense of, of what's happening on the ground. People have made up different mind and they are telling something else. You know, so at the moment, everything is aligned so in favor here, here's of Here's what I wish to say. Let's just zoom out for a moment and think of the larger picture in a more historical perspective. I was at the Pran Pratishtha of the Ram Mandir at Ayodhya where while Prime Minister Modi was being introduced, he was linked to Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj, the ideal Hindu king, uh, who at that time, you know, really demonstrated all the virtues that good Indian kings should have. So he's kind of being projected in a historical arc in that same kind of uh, weight category. Rahul Verma, is there any contemporary his political figure who comes to your mind who 10 years on, not just in India because there's no comparison here, <laughs> but even internationally, 10 years after being in power, manages to increase his party's vote share by 3%. Mm -hmm. Go back in time. No, who but, comes to your mind? No, can again. I, who can comes I, can I make a, someone who can? Yeah, who? You know, we often tend to, since Nehru is still in the news. Remember, Nehru in the early 60s was a weakened prime minister. The war with China, despite that one. Please understand. No, but his vote share kept coming down. No, no. But his but vote share in the years that he was in power, the Congress kept losing ground. But the BJP is no gaining ground. No, no, and there was no opposition. No opposition. But where like is the opposition no, today? That's what I am saying. Where is the opposition today? There was no opposition. Where is the opposition? I think only Nehru can be compared. Rahul Varma, okay, so you've got Nehru, Modi, Nehru and Modi. From a yes. party of in a party who got us independence, that kind of uh, goodwill to Congress party after 47 with all the heavyweights of our freedom struggle on the Congress side. Let's be very, very honest. The 52-53 mandate was not Mr. Nehru's mandate. 62 I'm talking about. 62, yes. But, but the vote share dipped. Vote share dipped a lot. No, but there by was then no his actions goes up in 57. Yeah, no, no, know, but yeah. in 62 and up after that, he's being punished for his actions. The people in India at this moment are rewarding Modi and the See, BJP for what they are seeing, far from punishing. Give, let, let's spend some time on this. Let's, Historically, who comes to your mind? Yashwan Deshmukh. No, nobody. I mean, nearest that from the... Uh, and, and one point which I wanted to make where I can probably answer your question is the hunger to win and willingness to work 24-7 to ha let that happen. And that thing, only person which comes to my mind is Mrs. Indira Gandhi. Yes. Besides that, no other prime minister in India had a hunger to no, win. I'm not, and I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not restricting this conversation, okay, so Raj Chingappa to India. Raj Chingappa, no, 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 in a historical no, 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 context, who comes to your mind? No, no, somebody no, democratically no, no, only, elected. Only an authoritarian leader who yeah, knows how, how to, to fix, say, who, who knows how to fix the mandate across the world. How is he fixing the mandate? No, no, Putin. I'm not talking about Modi, I'm talking the only, when you I'm say, example, when you say, give me an example parallelly. There are democratic countries where you will have the likes of a Putin in, yeah. in, in Russia and Erdogan in Turkey who will know how to, in a way, manage the mandate. No, no, Erdogan had a but very tough a, fight. He won with 6% in, in, in points. In a relatively free and fair, relatively free and fair system like ours, to do it over three elections with your popularity increasing, I Rahul think makes Prime Minister Modi sui generous. You look at Algeria, where there was, you know, this thing that uh, uh, Khalifa, he went, when Nehru was there, then I went with Hamid Ansari, he was still Prime Minister. Yeah, but let's not compare Algeria with an India. I think, Rahul, you make a very mm. good point. In a democratic society like ours, with all the pulls and pressures, with, as we are seeing in our poll, South India having a very different politics, states like Maharashtra, Bihar, Bengal, Karnataka looking tough for a while. I think Mr. Modi has done the remarkable job of holding his popularity. And I will only say this, yeah, and, and I think this is an important it. point that we need to make. While we talk of the invincibility of the Prime Minister, and I think CSDS's post poll uh, in 2019 showed one out of every three voters voted yeah. for the BJP because of Prime Minister Modi. The BJP itself 
is not, not invincible. He's not invincible. That's why yes. I made the slightly controversial yes. point that if I was the opposition, I would focus on states. When no, Mr. Right. Modi is not on the ticket, the BJP is weakened. You want a strategy for the future? Start from the states. Okay, the absolutely. problem is you're going to make this, you know, the India I, Alliance has come into this 2024 election with no clue of how they want to face See, up to uh, Just Modi. to remind the viewers, Rahul, once and again, you know, we are so damn focused on 14, 19 and probability of 24 that we are forgetting the fact that BJP as a party has lost 50% of the elections in this country in the last 10 years. Yeah. 50%? Yeah. You know, so invincibility of Mr. Modi as an individual with the BJP is benefiting from is not exactly the invincibility of the BJP, That's number one. Right. Number two, yes, I concede and I understand being a conservative poster, this is probably the starting block of BJP and the NDA. And majority of our polling was hap happened before the Ayodhya uh, Pran Pratishtha, that impact has to come in and with the way they are looking out for alliance partners and the way they are going about it, this can only go up. Having said that, if you will ask me if there is any, I don't see a black swan because nobody can predict a black swan, but one red flag, that is the complacency factor. You know, complacency factor was the are factor they which caused them. Are they uh, looking complacent to you? No, they are not. But what, 2004 urban areas the turnout dropped by 18 percent and that no, caused Modi the is no watch by. That's precisely what I was trying to say. They have learned their lessons pretty hard and neither, neither so also there is a very Can I give you a very interesting anecdote now? Not yeah. Mr. Sudarshan. Sure. Both the factors are remaining. Can I give you a very interesting anecdote? Just this morning point. I was told by an MP, you know, parliament has been extended by a day. The BJP is going to put out a white paper on what the Congress did over 10 years. Kya zarurat hai agar 300 seat mil rahe what to put white paper? Lagta hai desperate hai. Mene ka desperate nahi hai. They want to take that 320, 330 that the mood of the nation is going because he wanted to know the numbers. 320, 330 to 370, 375. Ek din bhi nahi chhodna hai parliament ka. If we can get an extra Saturday in where all the TV channels for 7-8 hours will talk about this white paper, keep the mahal going. So there is no complacency. On the other hand, it's like a team which has scored 350 uh, runs is sure to win. But things here, last 10 over, no, but all so run, look at 450. Look at, how, Tiwari, look at how this Charso par is seeping into the psyche of the opposition. The yeah. Congress guests we had today, even Kharge ji in parliament, they are referring to Charso par. They should be dissing the idea of yeah. that. It's like you have the most, com forget idea of the a moment. <laughs> you have the most competent practitioner of the political craft up against the most inept practitioners of politics I think, in the uh, Congress. You are right. That is why when you right. have them go head to head. What, what Modi did, what Modi, Modi did, Modi did, Modi did uh, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm just, just, uh, yeah, just a quick yeah, point. Yeah, uh, I think one, when you look at what he's done in terms of 370 and uh, 400 for the uh, NDA, he's addressing what the concerns the Ashwant was talking about. He has pushed the bar even further, higher and better. So, and today you feel, He's getting 300 and we, you know, he shouldn't be getting 400. No, but you heard what Rashid said. The second point. Congress will be happy no, no, with this hour. The second point I would like to make. Okay, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 point. Yes. Rashid, see, the Congress thinks that if India today and Yashwan Deshmukh are saying 71, it means Congress is well past 100 seats. That's how they're thinking. Yeah. No, I just have a quick... That's what they're saying. In addition to this one, you were asking about who else would you... I think Mr. Modi is in a league of his own. Internationally. Across Internationally, yes. And Go see, we are the world's history. largest democracy. I think we have produced great leaders. Precisely. You may not agree with Nehru or what he did. Kamit Diyar, it was Nehru. Kamit Diyar, this time, it was Modi. And I think we must, in many sense, commend that rather than bring comparisons Indra Gandhi no, so okay, so Nehru. Nehru is one comparison. Go, I'm saying go internationally, Raj, with even, all the even, experience. You see, you, there, you, you could get other kinds of leaders who had just held on to power. In the yes. recent right? power you, you can't have any be... comparison with American presidents yeah. because they have to give up their terms yeah, in two terms. Terms. Yeah. You might end up with the Putin, Erdogan and all those. These are not the kind of leaders you'd like to match this. this you know, or even uh, Xi Jinping, the, the other side, right? He's also uh, there, but of course, a completely no different system. No. So if you really look in terms of democratic nations, Mr. as I said, he's in a league of his own. I don't think we need to bring comparisons. Here's a person, as Rajdeep described, we talked of leadership. We have to appreciate that. May like him, may not like him. There is something about him that is, you know, converted a, a nation of uh, uh, 1.6. Yeah, I think, uh, again, I completely agree with Raj. And just to add to him, see, 
what sets Modi apart from everyone, that see, Nehru inherited a party and an organization. Modi also inherited. But BJP was not present in many parts of India as a strong force. What Modi has done in these uh, 10 years has put the party on map in eastern India. Uh, in many states where they were in single digit are now running governments, right? So what he has done electorally has basically cr like created that machine which was there, maybe using all kinds of things, but now BJP is a very, very formidable and unparalleled election machine in contemporary politics across the globe. Can I add, I think that can is I, one of his biggest across the globe. Yeah, yeah, you know, can I add two more M's? Interesting. One is middle class. I remember Arun Jaitley telling me this 10 years. He said, as India, India becomes more and more middle class country, he believed that the BJP was there at the right place, right tap, uh, uh, to capture on the energies of this middle class. I believe post-1991, ironically, the Congress party didn't cap uh, capitalize on the zeitgeist of this new India. They went in the other direction when they should have actually taken credit for Manmohanomics, built this middle class constituency. Look at across urban India. And as India gets more and more urbanized, look at BJP's performance across urban areas. Mr. Modi is popular in both rural and urban. We forget the Labharti scheme and the impact that that has had. Direct benefit transfer, using it to put money in people's hands. But I think middle class has become a core constituency of the BJP and they built around that. And whether we like it or not, it may be the elephant in the room to some majoritarianism. Particularly in North India, there is a sense of a Hindu majority, the point you made a new republic, somewhere it's the Hindu assertion. That also is a major factor. No, is when it, I add Labharti it, and Hindu assertion, I don't think you can win no, an but election. Which government in the past, Rajdeep, has spoken of making India a developed country and set a timeline for it. Sure. And actually then mobilize the will and try to build the circumstances which allow us to move in that direction. This is the only other government no, no, that I know. There I want to only put one small which caveat, is, which is there are areas of darkness in this country. Let's not be, uh, let's be honest. Whether it's the ethnic... No, but there are areas of darkness in the United no, States. No, 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 there are areas of darkness in Europe. Just, uh, just as I believe the middle class has arrived, unemployment is a serious crisis. It's going to get worse in the era, era of automation. In uh, Education systems will not be able to match what the new market I, I, needs. I, I just think, agree with let's you not, to let's some not extent. say that this, we've reached there. No, Mr. Mr. Modi is offering a dream. Mr. Modi is offering a dream. And making the effort to achieve that dream. Now you are hitting it. He's offering a dream. He's He's, he's offering, offering a, a vision he's and offering he's making a vision the effort dream. to take us yeah. in that direction. Yeah. So it's not as if he's Aspiration. sitting on his exactly. laurels but then and he's aspiration. 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 aspiration and aspiration no, but then is not just middle class, Rajdeep. Middle class is like 50 shades of grey. Anybody who is not in uh, BPL family is a middle class. Okay. So uh, from lower middle class to middle middle class to the higher middle class, it's an aspirational class. And he is a person who is showing a vision and a dream. That, okay, you are maybe suffering, but what the India which I'm trying to make will be a great India for your kids, your grandchildren. And, okay, sure. yeah. yeah. and he's me. working towards no, no, But then tell me, if this was also perfect, the double engine, as we saw in certain states, doesn't work. I think India is too complicated to reduce it to, you know, Modi's captured the attention of all of India in every election. That's why he's captured it in a presidential style. In, in elections, increasingly, are presidential at the national That's level. Perfect. Mera leader kon hoga? Mera prime minister kon hoga? Mr. Modi, with his consummate ability, as a communicator okay. and the point I keep making Rahul which Prashant Kishore also now makes Mr. Modi has been around 50 years in politics he's seen various you know these black swan events you're able to conquer sometimes through your past experience it's like a journalist if you've been 40 years we can do live program Pelesal, it was a struggle Mr. Modi has been there he's done the hard yards let's give and him he's been in power Chief. since 2002 uh, two. 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 he's been in power for 22 years and that gives him experience of hand on the other side become elite you've also. got regional leaders who've been stuck in their states I think one of Mr. Modi's major achievements is from Gujarat Chief Minister. When he became Gujarat Chief Minister, we thought, ye kaise banega RSS ka admi hai, has no experience in governor. When he, uh, governance, when he becomes Prime Minister, we said, yeah, Prime Minister, we said, ne, you said. Da, look, no, I, one minute, one minute, we one said. minute. I will say this, and I have, I have proved Mr. Javed Akhtar at a dinner in 2012. One week after uh, Modi won Gujarat a third time, uh, he said, Yar, kya lagta hai? Modi ji aayenge center pe. Toh ka, hai, I think Modi ji will come to the center. I think he will win the elections. 2012 December, before he tilted. He said, nahi, nahi, he is haunted by 2002. Nahi ho sakta hai. I said, sir, there comes a time when a person can sort of go beyond his sort of now, past 
to the future. So I will not take that, but I will say this, that he surprised people. I would certainly... And he continues to surprise people. He continues to and surprise. And he continues to surprise the same people who never <laughs> cease to be surprised. That's a good line. That's a good line. That's, That's a good line. Nobody's true. It's true. That's but true. The thing is that, see, see, see the, the fact, matter of fact is that he, he works hard. And I think uh, uh, pretty much, and I've said this to Raj, that, you know, as one of my physics professors, he never used to give us marks on the final answer of the numericals. He used to give us the marks on what did we attempt. Dimag lagaya ki nahi lagaya, koshish ki ki nahi ki. I think Indian voters are coming to an age where they want to see the leaders make an effort. If you make an effort, they are even willing to own up your failures. See how people have owned up his demonetization failure. Okay. People, majority of them say, galak tha, lekin sahi niyat se kiya. Okay. You know, no, so we are out of time. There are we out of time. We need to there finish. Are, there are two politicians which are fascinating in that sense, using this effort point. One is Mr. Modi, one in a very different way, Naveen Patnai. Yeah. 25 years, never lost, and you ask people, kya? Nahi, sir, koshish kar rahe. Hmm. You see, Indian voters, I right, want to reward well-intentioned. Okay, okay, so we are out of time. Sure. We need to wrap up. Rajdeep. No, no, Rahul, just one little yes. point. I think it's more than just try. Modi delivers. He has demonstrated that on time also. Whether it is building a parliament building, it's getting things done. Delivery. He no, makes sure also that is the culture change. And also that remember that at the end of 10 years, Dr. Manmohan Singh, with no disrespect to him, was completely tired. The government was coming apart. Uh, even Vajpayee ji, at the end of his six years, was very tired. He had to say, "Na tired, na retired." But you know, the government wasn't energetic. Prime Minister Modi continues to stay as energetic, as pumped up. Where people around and have seen younger officers, much younger than him. You know, and, and at New York uh, at the Yoga Day, I asked one young officer in his team, "Are tum kyun nahi kare? Are nahi nahi? Unme jada energy humme kam." So you know, that's like people half his age. Okay, so Rajdeep, before we wrap up, if you were Modi, what song would you be singing tonight? <laughs> uh, what's that song that Shah Rukh Khan had? Uh, number one. Uh, I don't expect me uh, to know. Can, what is the song? Uh, I'm, the best, I'm, the, I'm best. the best. I'm the best. I'm the best. I'm the best. Koi hero yaha, koi zero yaha. I'm the best. Look, I'm the best. Mr. Mr. Rahul Gandhi, what song are you singing tonight? You know, you're putting me in trouble yeah, because. I know what. Hey, kya hua? <laughs> kab hua? Kaise? Look, there are lots of songs, but. Look, seriously, I hope for the Rashid sake... Rashid has another song. Can I, can I though say something? For the sake of Indian... Okay, I'm with you. One second. If you are... Apna time aayega. Haan, bhai, bhai, bhai. Yeah, that's a... Bhai, advisors bata rahe usko yehi. Apna time aayega. Rahul, he's still... He's still... Look, let's not rule out anything. He's still like Yadav. Who? He's still like Yadav. Who? He is saying Rahul Gandhi thinks apna time aayega. No, no. Rahul Gandhi is being advised that apna time aayega. Look, I am saying... I hope for our sake of our... For our okay. democratic process and indeed for our television coverage, we have an exciting election. I hope that this mood of the nation doesn't result in most people believing up kyon dekhna hai. No. But, 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 but I hope we have reason, a contest. Is that the reason he has given this shagupa yeah. of 360, 370 and 400? Yes. Because right. he might be feeling, Rajdi bore ho ra hooga. Kuch <laughs> jaya ro. So we are, we're, we're, we're out of time. time. You know, something you know, to... If, <laughs> and if you look at the numbers across social media, across digital, across television over the past uh, four hours of programming, I can see that there is interest. So Rajdeep may be feeling slightly, yeah, there's no fun over here. There's a lot of excitement buzz around the India story, a lot of excitement about the Bharat of the future and around these poll numbers as well. And I think that will continue through. So I think Rajdeep's earned his dinner. Sung for, sung for his supper. Sung for my supper. India has been modified, it appears, as per the mood of the nation. We'll wait and see what the voter really wants. This was uh, simply a teaser uh, to what might be lying ahead. So day two tomorrow. A uh, lot of uh, detail on impact of Ayodhya, the impact of Nitish Kumar switching in Bihar, um, the performance report card of the Prime Minister, his government, the opposition, all that and more coming up in part two of the India Today Mood the Nation all through the day tomorrow. So we'll see you again. Biannual survey brought to you in partnership with Sea Voter, which has done this comprehensive nationwide survey at a time when all eyes are on the big question who will win the general elections of 2024? 
That's the question that we're going to answer in a detailed manner this time, but not just the big picture. We'll be going state by state to bring you all the results you've been waiting for. This is the last Mood of the Nation opinion poll before the general elections of 2024, which is what makes this that much more important and so much rides on the results of this Mood of the Nation opinion poll. Let's introduce you to our guests who are going to join us over the next several hours as we bring you the results of uh, the Mood of the Nation poll. I want to start by introducing Yashwan Deshmukh, lead cephalogist at Seawater. He's got this fancy Himachali cap on and uh, has been working very hard over the last several weeks. And lots of changes, Rajdeep, in the chess drawing board, forcing revisions in the MOT and samples. So he's really been working doubly hard, uh, not just because of us, but also because of all the changes that are happening. And there could be more equation. changes within the next month. You know, change is the only constant. Next month or tonight, tomorrow, there could Who be knows? changes. Uh, galore and therefore we'll have to keep looking at these numbers very carefully. Flanking him is Raj Chingappa, editorial director at India Today magazine. He and his team have worked on compiling and dissecting the results of uh, this poll and you can read the analysis in uh, the new issue of the magazine which is out in stands now. We've got Amitabh Tiwari who's joining us, political analyst. And to our left we've got Rahul Verma. Rashid Kidwai joins us and we've got Sanjay Kumar from, C, uh, from CSDS. So this is really as sharp a political panel as can be and I'm discounting myself. And uh, no, I'm keeping guys leave there discounting myself. But a very sharp panel on this. So what we'll do for a moment is take you through the methodology uh, adopted by Seawater for this poll. And then we'll go state by state in getting you the results of this poll. So this Mood of the Nation opinion poll was done between the 15th of December and the 28th of January. Largely, some polling happened later when there were specific changes like they were in Bihar. But largely between the 15th of December and the 28th of January. For this poll, the sample size was 35,801. Uh, but Seawater, as our viewers know by now, has a continuing tracker sample. So that adds 1,13,000 uh, interviews to the Mood of the Nation sample, giving us a robust sample size of 1,49,000. For this sample and the tracker that's been going on uh, between the 15th of August and the 31st of January. So there's a 3% uh, plus minus uh, margin of error at the micro level. And Yashwan claims he has a 95% uh, confidence level. So that uh, said, Rajdeep, let's now dive straight into the numbers for Uttar Pradesh. Okay, let's go state by state. And we are starting with the state of Uttar Pradesh. Because remember, generally it's believed all roads to Delhi lead through Lucknow. That certainly to some extent has been the case in 2014 and 19, given the domination that the BJP has had in the Hindi heartland. But let's take a look at what the mood of the nation poll is saying. First, let's take a look at vote share because vote share will give you a sense of where the parties stand. And what we are predicting at the moment is a 52% vote share for the NDA, which means that the NDA is actually up from last time. They're even higher than they were in 2019 when they did remarkably well in that election. The India Alliance, and presumably this India Alliance includes the Congress, the SP and the RLD as of now. The RLD could well switch sides. Therefore, at the moment, they are at 36%, up 10% last time, but they have lost the BSP, which was in 2019 with the Samajwadi Party and others 12%, primarily the Bahujan Samaj Party. But the key thing is, how does this translate into seats? That's the difficult task that Yashwant has undertaken. The seats, what would the seats be in the 80-member UP Assembly? And just take a look at that. The NDA goes up from 64 to 72 out of 80. It's a gain of 8. So NDA, BJP holding rock solid in the saffron heartland in a way. The uh, India line 6 to 8, so only a marginal increase and that's divided between 1 for the Congress and 7 for the Samajwadi Party. Others are completely wiped out. The 10 last time were the BSP. So Rahul, the first big numbers clearly show the BJP holding its own in what's become its basket. And if the BJP is already at 72 in the way... Uh, the state plays right now. Yashwan, the most important question is, now that RLD is very clearly in talks with the BJP, if uh, Jayan Chaudhary was to join the NDA, where could that 72 reach? Well, I mean, of course, uh, it will impact uh, uh, minimum number of two seats for sure. Uh, but it's not just about how many seats that 
RLD is contesting and they are likely to win. It's also about the overall impact of the JAT voter consolidation in the entire Western UP and not just Western UP, but across in other states, which, are, which have a significant number of JAT voters. So that, having said that, Rahul, let me be upfront about this one. And me and Raj discussed this so many times about the numbers of the seats and everything. You know I am a conservative pollster. And I find it very difficult to tell people that, you know, why are these others or other NDA numbers or non-NDA numbers coming up even when you have NDA or BJP crossing 50% of vote? That is simply because of the probability. When you say any party is there in that particular region, even if you cross 0 to 1, 0 to 1, in UP with six regions, you end up with 0 to 6 kind of range. So it's also a question of probability. Otherwise, this number with this kind of a vote share could end up anywhere. So you're saying it could be 80 also? I will not say it cannot happen. No, because, because he's sitting on 72 and he says, I'm conservative. No, no, <laughs> it, 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 it is a possibility. You know, it can't be ruled out. But let's, you know, we are T20 style today. So I'm going to ask all our panelists quick responses because we are going through the entire country. Raj Gappa, Uttar Pradesh, as I said, the road to Delhi reads through Lucknow. If this is the result of, uh, of Lucknow, clearly the keys to Delhi are in the hands of Prime Minister Modi. No doubt Uttar Pradesh is the bellwether state. And if it is showing the kind of results that it, uh, the uh, India Today Sea Voter Poll is showing, the BJP is on its way. I would only like to point out a little bit of history because uh, the, uh, Prime Minister Modi had said he'd want to win uh, 405 seats and for the BJP, 370 seats. So if you look back, the only person who did that was Rajiv Gandhi, who won 405 and, of course, subsequently became 14 when Assam and Punjab were added on. And at that time in UP, uh, that was the undivided UP, I think the Congress won 82 out of 85 seats. That was a sweep. Now, if we are going by these figures, and as if touch 50%, I'm sure the other pollsters would say that, the BJP would require to max in Uttar Pradesh if it has to get its target of 370 that it Remember, those two elections are very different, Amitabh Tiwari, because the 84 election was held in the aftermath of the assassination of then Prime Minister Indira Gandhi. It was an election. Uh, one largely on the back of sympathy. Here is Prime Minister Modi who's been in power for 10 times. This is not an empathy, sympathy vote. This is a performance vote. If you end up 72 or if Yashwan says could be even higher, that would be the most incredible performance imaginable. Yeah, so if, if these numbers hold true, if you see whatever is BSP's loss of 10 seats is largely accruing into the tally of the BJP. BJP is gaining 10 seats at the expense of BSP. So if these numbers hold true, then what is clearly being shown is that it is largely a pro-incumbency vote. It is a pro-Modi vote. It's a pro-development vote. It's a pro-vote for his policies and the way he has handled the but, economy. But are you surprised because Rahul Verma, Uttar Pradesh was for a long time, for about 30 years, completely fragmented. Now suddenly, since 2014, the BJP has come to dominate the state. Two general elections, two assembly elections and now you could have a third general election. Is the BJP therefore entering into UP much like it was in Gujarat, a completely dominant party, 50% more, 50% uh, vote and more, should suggest a uh, dominant state? Absolutely, uh, Prasdeep. One reason for fragmentation in the 90s and early 2000s was that there were at least four credible players that were present. Uh, BJP, Congress, uh, SP and BSP, the regional parties were very, very strong. Over a period of time, Congress declined and also BSP declined. So why Yashwant is saying that uh, he's, the numbers are conservative? Because this time BSP is moving out uh, and they are still holding on to 10% or uh, some vote share that, there, which means that actually the numbers could be much more than 75, even touching 70. No, but 70. here's the thing. It reflects the continuing trend of elections becoming bipolar. Remember, the BSP, according to Yashwan's analysis, is projected to come down from 19% vote share last time to 8% this time. That's 11% down. And this is a party which in 2007 had won 200 plus seats. So that just shows how the BSP has ceded ground to now become a rump. 8% Sanjay Kumar for the once mighty BSP just shows that for time to come, elections in UP will be BJP on the one side and Samajwadi party on the other with a much weaker Samajwadi party against a much stronger BJP. Uh, Rahul, we need to understand why elections are becoming bipolar not only in UP but in Bihar and many other states. 
because I get a sense that the entire election now is being contested in the name of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. I don't see this election as a contest between Rahul Gandhi and Narendra Modi or Narendra Modi versus any other leader. It is a referendum on how, how do you rate the performance of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. So people are divided on two axes, pro-Modi, anti-Modi. And you see the election becoming bipolar on this, not on the issues, but largely on this factor. If you are on pro-Modi side, you tend to align, your party tend to align with NDA. And if you are anti-Modi, you tend to align with the UPA. Or if you are not able to align with the UPA, then you go alone. But that is what is happening in UP. But where does this lead, therefore, the India Alliance, Rashid Kidwai? Because you've got a situation where you are tying up with the Congress and Samajwadi Party tying up. Uh, we still don't know how the seat distribution will take place. But when they look at these numbers, there'll be a sense of hopelessness almost, particularly if Jayant Chaudhary also uh, leaves uh, the alliance. Even if Mayavati, you know, was to come on their side, which seems unlikely in a few weeks' time, either way, India Alliance is starting this race with uh, one hand tied behind its back. Yes, I think there is a total sense of despondency. But I still think... Uh, Mayawati is the biggest insurance policy that BGP has in Uttar Pradesh. Imagine this 8-10% vote going to, you know, India Alliance would have made material difference. And second thing is, how many, you know, Gandhis, uh, three Gandhis, Rahul, Sonia and Priyanka, how many of them are going to be in fray? Because if, unless they contest, and same applies to Samajwadi Party, Akhilesh Yadav and uh, Dempel Yadav and all those people, credible people. If so what's your sense? Will any of the Gandhis contest now? Given I don't these think, numbers? I, think, I think they are looking for Rajya Sabha route. At least one of them will get into Rajya No, but Rajya I don't Sabha. agree with Rashid Kidwai. He says BSP joining the India Alliance makes a difference. Even if I add 36 and 8, that's 44 up against 51 for uh, 52 for the NDA, it still leaves them six short. Even if there is perfect transfer of votes, which we saw in the last elections, when they were both stronger in the BJP, not as strong, it still didn't make a difference. Look, Rahul, BJP is the dominant party of UP. There's no doubt about that. And all the other parties are basically trying to compete for that same anti-BJP vote that exists. So even if they come together, they are actually only consolidating the anti-BJP vote. The BJP vote itself, once it's crossing 50%, even if it was 48% tomorrow, they would still be over, well over 60 as they were in 2019. So I think... And Rahul, we are not factoring in the Ram Lahir, which is there. There is a lot of... Why people are shifting? Because they think that there is going to be a huge, you know, consolidation in favour of uh, uh, BJP in Uttar Pradesh. And now, that is... So this was a cricket match and the BJP ends up 72 out of 80 in the first state and the projection across our table of really sharp political minds is that it could actually even be more. Then, you know, the Congress and the India Alliance are out of the race even before the race has begun. Shahzad can say, okay, thank you very much. I don't need to do the talking. Modi is doing the talking for me. Rahul, no, no game is over till, it's, till it is uh, totally over. That? So I know this is a very disappointing save for uh, the India Alliance. But... I must say that despite every all the advantages that the Prime Minister and Amit Shah and BJP have built up over these 10 years or so, you know, they, they're still pretty much at 50%. The opposition has not been able to come together as we need to, to defeat uh, 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 this, uh, this power so far. But the election is not over. The election is going to be contested in UP and all over the place. And by the way, I know you people said something about the performance. This is a performance uh, election. If this is a performance election, I want to ask you. I want to ask the people of UP, for example, that until 2014, UP's economy was larger than Tamil Nadu's economy. Now, 10 years later, and most of that is under... Well, all of it is under Prime Minister uh, Modi, and most of it is under uh, Chief Minister uh, uh, Yogi Adityana. Why is the UP economy now smaller than the Tamil Nadu economy? What has changed? Now, at the national level, Salman, if, Salman, if it is Salman, one, point, are, one point, one we point. We are doing a one T20 point. style analysis, so we want one point at a time. You one make point, your one point. One no, one let, let, let Shahzad Punawala now respond. Shahzad, the fact is that UP is seen now as a dominant party state. Do you give credit to the Modi factor, the Upyogi factor, a combination of both, the fact that the double engine there seems to be really working at the moment? Rajdeep, I give credit to three factors and let me complete my answer. One is Ram Lala, two is Gita and three is PD and let me complete. Ram Lala means Rashtriya Suraksha, Mahila, Lavarti, Leadership and uh, 
अर्थव्यवस्था गीता मीन्स ग्रोथ इन्फॉर्मेशन इनोवेशन इन्फ्रास्ट्रक्चर टेक्नोलॉजी एंड आत्मनिर्भर भारत एंड पीडीए मीन्स परफॉर्मेंस डिलीवरी एंड एस्पिरेशन टूडे राजदीप मोदी जी एंड योगी जी हैव कन्वर्टेड द वोकैबुलरी ऑफ पीपल लाइक यू फ्रॉम एंटी इनकम्बेंसी टू प्रो इनकम्बेंसी वेर इवन द मोस्ट क्रिटिकल सिनिक्स लाइक योगेंद्र यादव एंड राजदीप सरदेसा एंड द डेमोक्रेटिक न्यूज रूम ऑल्सो हैव टू से दैट बीजेपी को सबसे ज्यादा नंबर मिलेंगे ही दिस काइंड ऑफ कन्वर्जन हैपन्स वेन टाइम एंड द टाइम द पीपल सी द लीडरशिप एंड द परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ द पार्टी ऑन द ग्राउंड एंड ओवरऑल बिकॉज वी हैव अ मिशन एंड अ विशन वी आर नॉट पीपल ऑफ कमीशन करप्शन एम्बिशन एंड फैमिली प्रोफेशन एंड देफ आर आई गिव क्रेडिट टू राम लला गीता एंड पी डी ए So, I, I love his acronyms. He's got to go very far in politics. Given those acronyms, Mr. Modi has clearly uh, got a few bucks in the party who know how to do uh, how to use acronyms rather well. What I want to do now is play out a small excerpt from a show we had earlier today uh, from Lucknow, where we spoke to voices on the ground, trying to get a sense of the pulse in Uttar Pradesh. So here are some excerpts from the Mood of the Nation poll from Uttar Pradesh from earlier today. Joining you from the city of Lucknow and once again if political clichés could hold true nothing Vipaksh ki jal gayi hai ekta ki rassi isliye bhajpa UP mein jeetegi 80 mein 80 Mujhe lagta hai yahan par baith ke lachhedar baatein karna aur thodi bahut sher o shayari kar lena ek cheez hai आप धरातल पर आके असलियत देख लीजिए हम पूरे विश्वास के साथ कह रहे हैं कि कांग्रेस पार्टी का उत्तर प्रदेश में खाता नहीं खुलने देंगे युवा चाहता है रोजगार और रोजगार के नाम पर आप कहते हैं पकौड़े तल लो केवल भारतीय जनता पार्टी है जो बढ़ती हुई दिखाई दे रही है बाकी सारे राजनीतिक दल आपको गिरते हुए दिखाई दे रहे हैं आप सबके अकाउंट में पंद्रह लाख आ गए दो करोड़ रूपए रोजगार मिल गया नहीं मिला और जब अलायंस करना था ना तब राहुल जी के प्रोजेक्शन के लिए उनकी एक यात्रा प्लान कर दी गई और जहाँ जहाँ चरण पड़े राहुल के चाचा बन का धार हुआ जैसे जैसे यात्रा प्रारंभ हुई एक एक करके अलायंस लगातार छूटते जा रहे हैं शुडेंट दी इंडिया अलायंस एक्चुअली लुक एट ब्रिंगिंग इन मायावती बिकॉज एक परसेंट वोट शेयर वुड ऑल्सो जी माइट नॉट विन अंगल सीट एज फार एज बहन मायावती इज कंसर्न आई थिंक इट्स रियली अपू हो वॉट शी वुड वॉन्ट टू डू तीन हम कह रहे हैं क्योंकि तीन हमने हटाई है I want to come now to the state of Punjab and just keep in mind that the numbers that you're about to see assume that the Aam Aadmi Party and the Congress will find a way of fighting together but this is a state where AAP and Congress are one and two and whenever two parties are one and two they typically find it very difficult to be able to distribute seats amongst themselves between two and three it's much easier than it is between parties that are one and two but since that's the way it is seeming on the surface that's the calculation that we're about to show you so here are the numbers for Punjab i'm going to start by taking a look at the vote share numbers first the bjp had 10% vote share in the previous lok sabha elections that's now projected to go up to 17 uh, that's 7% up uh, the aam aadmi party had 7% vote share in the last lok sabha elections that's now projected to go up to 27 that's 20% up from the last time the congress had 40% vote share in the last elections that's now projected to come down to 38 that's 2% down from the last time the akalis had 28% vote share that's now projected to come down to 14 a loss of 14% for the once formidable akalis let's take a look at how this converts into seats so on your screen right now for the 13 seats of punjab here are the sea voter india today mood the nation projections sea voters projecting that the bjp is likely to stay at two seats that two uh, they're likely to stay at two what's gone out from the nda kitty there are the akali seats the aap uh, is expected to be at five seats that's up four from the last time if we see the party wise break up of these seats uh, the akalis were at two that's likely to come down to one so the bjp holds on to its two seats uh, the aap goes up from one to five remember in the first election they fought in 2014 they had four seats uh, so they go up to five this time the congress at five they were eight last time so they're down three and the akalis are at one 
down two. Now, what could change potentially, Ashwant, is if at the last moment the Akhalis and the BJP are able to tie because behind the scenes is a lot happening. It's not firm, finalized, both sides haven't decided. The Akalis we know are keen, the BJP is 50-50, wishy-washy, but that can change any time. And if that changes, how does that potentially change these numbers? Of course, I mean, that, that would be having some impact for sure, because uh, I guess that uh, between the Akalis and the BJP, even though there has been a quite a lot of bad blood in the recent years, uh, the, as far as the core voting is concerned, they are pretty much supplementary in nature. The core has been anti-Congress vote at large, which the Akalis and the BJPs have been tending together. So this separation might have split it vertically because BJP ran away with the Hindu votes and Akalis were with their Panthic votes. But if they come together, definitely that will have an impact. But uh, 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 what, it will not be the same kind of seat sharing, uh, Rajdeep, that is for sure. Because wherever BJP is going back with their old allies, the seat sharing equation is no more the same, which sure. was defined by Vajpayee and Advani. But you know, yeah. this is a fascinating state, Raj Chengappa, because the alliances have, stay, have changed dramatically in the last few years. The BJP and the Akalis were together. AAP versus Congress was the battle uh, of Punjab. They've now come together. They may not have chemistry on the ground. Would, do you really believe that this AAP-Congress alliance will work in the end? and actually see the arithmetic benefits that this poll is suggesting? Or do you believe in the end uh, it will be very difficult for AAP and Congress to actually fight Punjab together? Which may be another twist to these numbers. It's my favorite state since I was uh, there as editor-in-chief of the Tribune. But I think here, let's take Sanjay's argument of brand Modi and a referendum of that. How much of that is going to play out in Punjab? It never happened when Rajiv Gandhi, in, 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 uh, you know, the, it was a very troubled state, of course, you know, at that particular time. So uh, the Congress never benefited at that time because of the wave that happened. So if you look at uh, it currently, if the AAP and the Congress get together, they're a decisive force. Have they got together? Have they agreed on anything? That is not to be seen as yet. No, but, but can I counter what you're saying to say? that it's almost impossible. How will you decide if you're one and two in that state? On a drawing board, you can say whatever you want. Given the problems in Uttar Pradesh, given the problems in Bihar, it is very difficult. In Delhi, they may still have some kind of an arrangement. In Punjab, they'll ultimately come to the conclusion that it's better for us to fight separately. No, they may well do that, Raul. They actually seem to believe that that might even work to their favor. That, you know, you have a multiple, uh, multi corner No, something place. then the premise of the poll for Punjab is flawed because it, it hypothetically assumes uh, that but, they're fighting together. Yeah, sure. But the one thing about Punjab, to take from what Raj Chengappa said, and that's the fascinating part of Punjab, uh, Sanjay Kumar, it's the one state the one state in North India where the Modi wave has not worked both in 2014 and 19. Look at both these elections. The Congress, if there's one state in Northern India, held its own in the last 10 years, it's Punjab. Is there, you think the politics of Punjab, therefore, is very distinct and different from the rest of the country in a way? Uh, two factors. Even though the, the political clout of Shiromani Akali Dal has com come down, but look at the states where regional parties are strong, BJP has not found it easy to make inroads. That's one case why in Punjab BJP has not been able to make inroads. Second, BJP has been contesting in Punjab in alliance with Akalis. So Akalis have been a dominant player. That was a difficulty in the Bihar also for the first couple of decades. Also, look at the social composition of Punjab. In Punjab, we have a very large majority of Sikh voters. So if you look at Ahmad BJP's popularity, Narendra Modi's popularity, there is some difference if you look at among the Hindus and people belonging to different other religions. That is another factor why BJP has not been able to penetrate in Punjab the way they have been able to expand in other parts no, of the No, but the calculation in the BJP and Shahzad can build on this. I'll also show you the uh, projection for Chandigarh, which is expected to go to the BJP. It's an urban pocket, and we saw the mess in the mayoral elections recently, but the poll is predicting that Chandigarh goes to the BJP. The problem is both the Home Minister and the Prime Minister have, have often say that they're very emotionally invested in the Punjab story. And yet on the ground we see, especially amongst the Sikhs, this pushback. So how does this square? The fact that the Prime Minister himself feels so emotionally close to the Punjabi community, to the Sikh religion, and yet there is a lot of antipathy and a very strong pushback. 
राहुल लुक व्हाट संजय जी वाज सेइंग जस्ट नाउ दैट सिंस वी वर द यंगर ब्रदर इन द अलायंस एंड दैट अलायंस वाज नॉट प्योरली फॉर पॉलिटिकल रीजंस इट वाज आल्सो फॉर इंश्योरिंग द मैसेज ऑफ सबका साथ एंड सामाजिक सौहार्द बिटवीन द हिंदू सिख कम्युनिटी एंड देयरफॉर वी सैक्रिफाइस्ड लॉट ऑफ आवर स्पेस एंड लॉट ऑफ द अदर थिंग्स आल्सो व्हाइल वी वर इन दैट अलायंस फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम नाउ वी आर फाइंडिंग आवर फीट इन पंजाब नॉट जस्ट इन अर्बन एरियाज बट आल्सो इन द रूरल पॉकेट्स एंड देयरफॉर दिस वोट इज अ वोट ऑफ एक्सपेंशन इट इज अ वोट ऑफ credibility that will keep increasing over the few period of years and look at the outreach that prime minister modi has done towards the sikh community it is not a political outreach it is an emotional outreach whether it is celebrating the prakash parbs of the great gurus of the sikh community whether it is celebrating veer balas divas or whether it is reaching out to various sections whether it is the fcra clearance on harminder sahib langars that we are uh, making gst free so i think there is a concerted effort not everything is done only for political purpose some things are beyond politics for rashtraniti we have done lot of things and i think that is also being reflected because punjabis are very patriotic people they will they are ready to sacrifice their lives for the nation they have contributed so much to the armed forces and i think you will develop you'll see because the kind of mismanagement aam aadmi party is doing look at the nasha mafia look at the kind of corruption that is taking place i'm not saying this mr siddhu is saying about the corruption and okay. also the alliance of thing congress and aap in punjab amitab tiwari is if they fight unfolded. separately this calculation and you're seeing the india number projected by c voter to zoom up in terms of vote share very substantially all that is based on the assumption that they fight together uh, if they don't fight together and if this is the base where akalis are at 27% vote share up 20 from the last time congress is at 38% vote share down up at 27 from the last time up at 27 up 20 congress at 38 down 2 akalis at 14 down 14 how could punjab read in the absence of this alliance see Punjab is the hotbed of anti-center politics. So even if AAP and Congress do not form an alliance, and unless the sub the Akali Dal forms an alliance with the BJP, these numbers could still hold. So unless the Akali Dal ties up with the BJP, I don't see a substantial difference in the numbers because the politics itself there is anti-center. Hindu being the majority in the rest of the country. but being a minority there complicates the political dynamics there and you know it's interesting to look at this because if we turn to the next state uh, because i think these two states the reflect just how india's map is so complex just turn to delhi not too far away from punjab where again the congress and the aap are trying uh, uh, trying to tie up just look at how the numbers stack up in delhi seven seats on offer but the national capital is often a barometer of what tends to happen across uh, north india take a look at vote share as per this in delhi even with the congress aap alliance you have 57% vote share going to the bjp and 40% to the india alliance of the congress and aap together others three how does this then translate into seats seven seats in punjab uh, in delhi all seven went last time remember to the bjp all seven will go back to the bjp as per this poll so that takes off from what amitabh tiwari just said punjab is almost sui generis uh, uh, rahul verma there if the congress and aap tie up they do very well they tie up in delhi where the aap is in power again and yet it's a clean sweep for the bjp does this reflect urban mindsets and delhi mindsets versus the anti center mindset as uh, amita put it about punjab uh, yes a little bit rajdeep uh, uh, that punjab uh, the demographic composition is different it has always had a uneasy relationship with the center even when uh, congress party was in power in 1970s and 80s but you have to also understand that this alliance in both delhi and punjab is not easy because in P- punjab aam aadmi party feels that they can gain these seats even without the congress so you've seen uh, chief minister of punjab making statements that we don't need to have an alliance and in delhi even if they come together they will not be able to make any dent no but why not why you know the it, reason is that congress explain party- why the aam aadmi party in two consecutive elections has swept delhi but the bjp has swept delhi in lok sabha so because so bjp continues to hold 40% vote share in delhi no matter which election is happening mm-hmm. uh, congress gets 25% when lok sabha happens but when vidhan sabha happens or mcd happens congress comes down below 10% so that entire congress uh, vote which is in lok sabha with them actually shifts with the bjp 
So ARP continues to be around 45 to 50 percent in, in, uh, in assembly elections. But in, in Vidhan Sabha, BJP gains... No, but my view is it's the Modi factor. You know, what, what seems to be is that the Lok Sabha elections, you look at Narendra Modi. When you're fighting a state election, you look at Arvind Kejriwal. That's happened two elections in a row. And it seems as per your numbers, it's going to happen again. It's a split vote, uh, Rajdeep, and it's happening across India, across all the states, honestly speaking. Each and every state... If you look into the vote share of the last assembly and the last Lok Sabha in together, you will see somewhere between 10 to 25 percent of jump in favor of the BJP whenever the Lok Sabha elections are there. However, in case of Punjab, I must mention this because it's an important and critical point to add. In the last 10 years, in our daily tracker, there are only three states where Rahul Gandhi as an individual leader has scored over in popularity over Narendra Modi. Three states all across India. One is Punjab, one is Tamil Nadu, and one is Kerala. But, and they have been like that. But one critical thing is, 10 years back, the gap between Rahul Gandhi and Narendra Modi was so huge in all these three states that it was a one-way traffic of sort. But over the 10 years, this gap is reducing and reducing and reducing, and it used to be in double digits. Right now, it is in single digits. But, but you know, the real, the split vote, I think, Rahul, is going to become more and more important. Voters seeing Lok Sabha very different to Vidhan Sabha, and Salman shows that's your big problem in a way. In Delhi itself, in the heart of the national capital, even if you tie up with AAP, it's the BJP that sweeps the election. That suggests to me that that voter is giving a huge bump to the BJP the moment it's a Lok Sabha election and Mr. Modi is on the ticket? No, I, I look, at, uh, look at it a little differently. The, what, what I'm seeing is if this data is correct, and uh, I have no way of knowing whether this is or this is not, we'll find out during the elections. But the Congress vote share is coming up in Delhi because people see, well, many people remember the governance that Congress uh, has delivered to this country. And that is why I think you see the uh, war share coming up at the when it comes to national level politics. Why that doesn't happen at the, when your state level uh, elections? I don't know what one. you're saying, Salman Bhai. From 23, it's gone up to 25. That's up to up. No, no, from 18, I, is down to 15. That's down three. I was BJP Rahul, was at 57. No, 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 it's at talking, 57. So you're clutching was, at Rahul, straws, Rahul, really. Rahul, I was, I was talking about the comparison with assembly elections. Somebody said that you know during assembly elections the vote share goes down, and during parliamentary elections it has come up. So clearly people do remember that the UPA times are very good. And why should they not? I mean, the per capita income still 32 of this country... No, no, one minute, sir. You're still 32. 32% 32 behind the BJP. Rashid Kidwai, this is, you know, this is the problem the Congress is facing. When it comes to a Lok Sabha election, Mr. Modi is on the ticket. It appears that the Congress is not preferred to the BJP. We've seen that. Direct BJP Congress fights. The Congress loses out now. Even in an alliance with AAP, they may lose out in Delhi. Yeah, but Rajiv Delhi's story is very simple. It is due to Muslim vote that swings. In assembly election, Muslim vote tends to favor Arvind Kejriwal's party, and in Lok Sabha election, it favors the Congress. So that is why there is a kind of mismatch. And when we talk about vote share, we must look at the each and every constituency profile, and that's where it matters. So even if some party is maybe 40 percent plus, another party is 57 percent, in seven Lok Sabha seats, the results may be slightly different. So vote share. No, so you make an necessarily... important point in a seat like say Chandni Chowk or in East Delhi, absolutely, where the minorities are in big numbers. Rashid Kidwai's argument is, and that's where we can go across to Sanjay Kumar that. As far as the state is concerned, it may still be 57 versus 25 and 13, but in that concentrated pocket, it may help this alliance, if it comes together, put a tighter fight in two seats, at least East Delhi and Chandni Chowk. Uh, this is a possibility, Rahul. I don't rule out this possibility. But if we are looking at on one side 57 and on the other side it is, say, in the 40s, 42, 45, 46, this is huge gap, makes it impossible that there would be, there are chances of close contest or a reversal in a couple you know, of constituencies. The, 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 real, the real story is the BJP, which gets about 38 to 40 percent in Vidhan Sabha, goes up to 57 in Lok Sabha. No, that's the story. No, 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 that's the story. Modi, that's the story for Vidhan Sabha no, election. Sir, my, for Lok no, no, election. sir, the point is the Modi factor, Rahul, is giving the BJP an 18 to 20 percent jump. That's the story. From 37, 38 percent, where it loses to the Amadmi Party, which gets over 50 percent. So the Amadmi Party is clearly seen as a Delhi regional party, and the uh, BJP in a Lok Sabha election takes it. Whatever the minority vote may get consolidated, but the majority vote in Delhi 
is going firmly towards the BJP for the Lok Sabha. Six months later, I have a Vidhan Sabha election and the situation at least, twice before, at least twice before has uh, been very different. True. This time around, we don't you know. know. So I think that's Rahul the Rahul significance. I want to make a quick point. Yes. Uh, two things. One, uh, the minority factor will come uh, into play on assembly elections where the assembly constituencies are smaller Small. and then you have enough number which can swing vote. Uh, even in Chadli Chowk, you don't have 50% Muslim population which can suddenly turn the seat. And besides, after delimitation in 2008, the entire composition yeah. of these seats have changed. Actually, in Delhi, there is not even a single Lok Sabha seat now which can say that, okay, minority <laughs> votes are the decisive vote here. Yeah. Earlier, the Chandni Chowk, before till 2009 elections probably, that was the probability, but after 2008, no, but in Delhi, if up in Congress are on the same ticket, it does make things more exciting. It does, it, it does, certainly, uh, absolutely, uh, it, it makes it. Could still be seven but but having said that, you know, it's, 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 also, more, it's also the fact, you know, Rajdeep, uh, Sheena Dixit ji was very clear, very, very clear that if, if Congress has to revive they have to make sure they do not go with Ahmadi Party. Without, go, no, without sir, you know, uh, that's how... Martin is also clear. That, so they, they have, she has been very clear. No, so I, 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 I really think, Rahul, the story which we must stress is this Modi factor. Because I, you know, this kind of split wording... But you're sounding see, surprised about no, it. No, because it's Ten nobody else of... in the world. You see, in, in, go across the world. A Republican state will vote for the Republicans, both for the Senate usually and for the presidential election. In India, you're seeing it now in two consecutive elections. For Delhi, we want uh, Arvind Kejriwal, but upar hamare liye Narendra Modi. And you're going to see it across because the America country. Because America doesn't have a Modi, because that's why. Whether, uh, you know, whether, whether America... No, no, I, I don't think it's as simplified as that. Been. I think the Indian voter has very consciously decided who I want for chief minister and who I want for prime minister. And I think it is fascinating because I don't think, as I said, I, I, I don't know any other country in the world where it happens. No, we make too much out of this and this is my personal opinion. There is only 15 to 20 percent of vote which swings here and there. That's so, a lot. No, yeah, so, but, but, in only couple of, but in only a couple of states, except Odisha, except uh, 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 Delhi, do you see a split verdict of this kind? Yes, see, Karnataka. You see Karnataka in election after election, you vote for the for one party in the Vidhan Sabha, you vote for another party in Lok Sabha. I am willing to have you, a small you, wager you, that there will be another half a dozen states where this will happen. Can you but bet Rahul. like now after Congress winning Karnataka in 2023, Congress is going to do same way as it done in 2019? But yesterday, I met a Maharashtra leader yesterday. He said, we have put all our eggs, uh, a Maharashtra Congress leader, we have put all our eggs in Vidhan Sabha. I said, what about Lok Sabha? He said, Lok Sabha Madhe Modi Ahe. <laughs> Please understand. Yeah, yeah. That's how they are seeing it. Here's the reality on the ground. 2019. Okay. Let's come to Madhya Pradesh in Rajasthan because this is a fascinating political adda, and if we go on, we can be here all evening. So I want to come now to Madhya Pradesh and take you through the numbers. We need to just step on the pedal a bit so we can go. Otherwise, we'll be here all evening. So in Madhya Pradesh, the and the BJP had 28 seats. Apart from Chindwara, they won 28 out of 29 seats. This time, they're expected to come down to 27. Uh, the uh, India Alliance had one, expected to go up to two. This is as far as votes are concerned. 58% last time for the BJP, same this time. And the Congress's vote share, 35 last time, expected to be 38 this time. So basically, you're predicting that one other seat could possibly go away from the BJP and one extra seat could get added to the Congress. I want to quickly go across to Rajasthan as well from uh, Madhya Pradesh. We'll take vote share first. Uh, the NDA had 61% vote share. The BJP had 61% vote share. This time 59. Uh, the Congress had 34. This time 35. Let's quickly see how that converts into seats. No surprises here. If that's how big your lead is, 59 plays 35 in a bipolar election, it's a clean sweep. So you, they're holding on, uh, Yashwan Deshmukh. Two areas where they shouldn't lose. You Absolutely. know, all these complicated, really detailed, finesse, nuance graphics that we have on the election intelligence dashboard, they're not going to be of any use. If this is how one way the traffic is, then what's the point of all the finessing? Well, you know, I, I was just trying to give what Radhip was saying. I will just give a term to it. I call it Modi dividend. There is a clear cut on an average 15 points Modi dividend as far as the Lok Sabha election is concerned. And the split vote, ironically, you know, I coined that term in 2004 while explaining why Vajpayee's popularity did not translate into votes for the NDA in 2004 because there was a lack of a split vote. 
And since then, we have seen slowly and steady, the number has been increasing. While Rahul is correct that, you know, in many of the states, it is not very clear cut in that way, because in many states where BJP has been absent, their split vote also to take them across a threshold of 30% wouldn't come. Let's say, for example, Kerala. Kerala, Vidhan Sabha election, BJP goes into single digits. But, in Lok Sabha election, they almost touch 20%. But, but you can, know. I, can I just make a point, and Raj, I want you to come in on this. When BJP swept states like Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh in 2019, we called it the Balakot bump. That post-Balakot, Mr. Modi had taken over the entire space. Now, even without Balakot, the fact is in both these states, the BJP is holding its own, sweeping Rajasthan as per this poll. 27 out of 29 in Madhya Pradesh. In Rajasthan, there was a close contest just a month ago. And yet now, Lok Sabha, it appears it's uh, the BJP all the way. What explains it? So we can even throw Balakot probably out of the, uh, uh, out of the equation. You just say there is the Moditva factor. You know, if you look at it, and you've asked somebody, even in Delhi or in Madhya Pradesh, who would you really want in the center? I mean, that's the question. And that answer is a very logical answer that voters would give. I would gather in Madhya Pradesh as well, who is the Congress projecting for, uh, for them to vote for? You as prime they, minister. As prime minister. Whereas you have Modi, and he has performed well. The state has uh, rewarded him well. And I think here, if you look at it, just to make a larger point, there has to be a saffron wash what I call a saffron wash in about six, seven states for the, for the BJP to get to its 303 or 370. Madhya Pradesh is one of those states. It lost one seat last time. And uh, there's a whole cluster of states where their vote percentage is 50% or more. I think, uh, let's take the seats, 223 seats or so, where they, they are, their margin is so big, over 5 lakhs or something, no. that they will win. Madhya Pradesh is one of those states that's there. So there are two points I'd like to make. One is what you were saying earlier, that the Modi factor will work very, very strongly to dispel any state kind of resistance that is building or any Congress support that could move towards Rahul or anything that's there. And two, these are the kind of states where the, when we have 50 percent, the no, but, opposition has no chance. Sure, but you know, Amitabh Tiwari, this comes back to the point which many people have been making that the real battle for the opposition was to try and take on the BJP where there's a direct BJP Congress fight. 186 seats last time where there was a fight, the Congress won just 12. If these numbers are to be replicated, it once again shows where the Congress is the main opposition, i.e. Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan. The BJP is the front runner, and you're seeing the Prime Minister in all his recent speeches, not focusing on regional parties, targeting the Congress, the Kamzor Kadi, as the BJP sees it. Yes, so one of the main reasons why BJP is again sweeping both these states is because it is facing Congress as the opposition, yeah, number one. Number two, the India Alliance partners do not have a single vote in these two states. So there is no advantage to Congress of any India bloc formation because it does not get the reciprocity. And number but three is that, as you said, the Modi factor, let's say. So 31, 33% people, or rather 37% people, voted on the name of the PM face. So if you don't have a PM face, you are excluding 37% of the right, voters. But why will these numbers leave the Congress party? They've lost Madhya Pradesh, they've lost Rajasthan Assembly election, they've lost Chhattisgarh. Now you've got a possible sweep as per this mood of the nation poll. Will it only further demoralize the Congress in the, in the heartland? Rajiv, actually that's the real trouble with the Congress party because Congress is strategist and that includes Mr. Yogendra Yadav, a new you know, addition in uh, team Rahul Gandhi. He's, and I heard, you know, once he told you also in an interview, he seems to think that the you know, Congress will get seven, eight, nine seats in Rajasthan, five, six seats in Madhya Pradesh and in Chhattisgarh. So there is, you know, he's converting that vote percentage, that 40% plus vote, of the Vidhan Sabha. Vidhan Sabha into Lok Sabha. And that is where I think there is a tactical error, but, the, but Rahul Gandhi is buying that. And India Alliance is buying that. You so know, that's Salman, Salman says this is the real problem in a way for the Congress party to revive itself. These, these are the states where you needed to focus upon in the last six months. You've lost assembly and now you could be wiped out in Lok Sabha. Rajdeep, uh, the, the, you, you are thinking that the only people who are fighting this election are basically Kharkeji and Rahul Gandhi. We have people, we have leaders in our states. They're fighting elections. They're getting ready. So what 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 will become evident later on is you know this what you in your own in your own poll we're seeing say for example uh, a bump of three percentage point three percentage points for India Alliance, which is Congress in Madhya Pradesh, for example. 
What that tells me is that there is a solid base for the Congress party to build on. And from now until the elections, anything is possible. So yes, the perception that is being built is that the uh, Modi ji has won, everything is, uh, is done. And by the way, yes, exactly, the PDA. Let me get to uh, uh, the PDA that uh, my friend Shahzad talked about. The PDA is, what is it? It is propaganda. There is nobody who, nobody who does propaganda more than uh, Narendra Modi and the BJP. What, is, what does D stand for? D is destruction, destruction of relationships between uh, brothers, Hindus, Muslims in this country. And what is A? A stands for arrogance, arrogance of party, of money, of uh, control of media. By the way, in the, in the Hindi belt that we are talking about, how many newspapers carry any, any news from the Congress party? You know it and I know it. Hindi newspapers do not carry news, uh, news of the Congress party. Meanwhile, not just regular news of the prime minister. Anytime the prime minister says something, he's plastered on television all the time. No wonder people think there is no, nobody but uh, Narendra Modi, because that is what uh, the media has been projecting. And by the way, I, I would slightly bet to, to defer. I read the Daily Bhaskar every morning, that and the Daily Bhaskar is one of the fine papers of the country that does give a lot of news, including news critical of the state governments okay. in those states. So I don't think that's the reason. What? So what? I have a few what? minutes what? left. What? Okay, okay, it's the biggest that... newspaper okay. across these states. But go ahead. Uh, we have, have a few comment. minutes left, and I want to let finish with the other states in North India. So I want to come to Jammu and Kashmir. In Jammu and Kashmir, the NDA is projected to have about 49% of the vote share. That's up three from the last time. Uh, remember that a lot of this vote share for the BJP actually comes from the Jammu region, right? Uh, the India Alliance, which is uh, Congress plus NC plus potentially PDP as well, at 36. That's down three from the last time. Others at 15. Converted into seats, uh, Yashwant and his team are projecting that the NDA will be at 2, which is where they were last time. Uh, the India Alliance, which is all these three parties together, will be at 3. So basically the Valley seats going to the India Alliance, the Jammu seats, regardless of what happens in the Jammu region, uh, going to uh, the BJP. From there, let's come to Ladakh, where we saw a big protest recently, but despite that, uh, Yashwant and his team are projecting that Ladakh will be with the NDA. Uh, from there, let's now come to Haryana. Uh, 10 seats in Haryana. The NDA Alliance, uh, the NDA, which is BJP and JJP in Haryana, now expected to come down from 10 to 8, a loss of 2. Uh, the Congress, which lost even Rotak last time, expected to go up from 0 to 2, up to. Now, what makes you think that that is going to happen, given the fact that there is a 12% vote share gap, 50 plays 38 in Haryana? Uh, Haryana, uh, Haryana, don't count the vote share gaps as such, you, because you remember that Haryana Assembly election, out of the fact that BJP was having a t almost 10% gap lead over the uh, BJP, I kind of predicted that BJP will sweep, but it became a hung. Where on earth did you find that a party with a lead of 10% votes and still ended up in a hung assembly in Haryana? So there are two different kinds of Haryanas. Let's be very uh, upfront about it. <laughs> you know, there are two different Haryanas. And it's not regional. It's about the demographics of different seats. And, then there, and the seats where it would be a jat dominated seats, they will be problematic for the BJP. The non jat seats would be easier for the BJP to win. So let's come to Himachal. Himachal is the one uh, state we haven't dealt with uh, in the north yet. Himachal, 69% vote share for the BJP last time. This spine expected to be 60% down 9. Uh, the Congress at 27, expected to go up to 29. Remember, uh, in Himachal, uh, of the four seats, they are predicting that the BJP will pick all four, the India Alliance none. The government in Himachal Pradesh at this time is the Congress government of Sukhvinder Singh Sukhu. Despite that, the Congress makes no gains in the Lok Sabha election in Haryana. Uh, then the last state is Uttarakhand, where they are predicting just a small dip in the NDA's fortunes when it comes to vote share. From 61 to 59, down 2. India Alliance at 32, up 1. But when it comes to seats, all 5 seats predicted to go to the BJP. You know, therefore, when you look at the big picture, uh, from the first region that we've looked at, and this is, if you're a T20 match and it's power play and you've just finished 6, uh, six overs of the 20, think of North India like this. The projected seat share across North India. First, the vote share across North, North India. NDA, 52%. 
India Alliance 38 percent, others 10. That's a 14 percent double digit gap and that includes remember Punjab where the BJP is relatively uh, smaller in terms of its vote share. How does this translate into seats Rahul? And I think this is the story and this has been the story not just now but also 2014 and 2019. 154 of the 180 seats as per the mood of the nation done by C voter go to the NDA 25 to India Alliance and remember of these 25 majority again coming in from Punjab effectively Rahul that means it's almost game set if not match just when you look at the North Indian numbers I mean it is almost impossible then for any side to match up uh, when you lose so big uh, in such a large part of the country and it's been the northwest monsoon that has really won the BJP we, 2014 and 19. We haven't come to the west yet. So seen That's the right. northern torrential downpour in favor of the BJP. We'll show you what's happening in the east and what's cooking around the Bay of Bengal uh, in the east and what's happening in the west along the Arabian Sea. So all that coming up in second hour of programming. We've dealt with the north where if this was Rajdeep said a T20 match you know, this is one-way traffic in this T20 match. You've got one team which is blazing away. Six overs, 100 runs. Huh? Six overs, 100 runs. 14 runs and over or 15 runs and over. Which, you know, really makes it almost impossible you know, and, to come back. And the thought that's coming to my mind, you know, there you see my election intelligence dashboard working. So many great ideas, so many different data sets which we are cutting and dissecting and diving. And I'm wondering what's the point. If it's all pointing in the same direction, then this is there's going to be a lot of effort which won't really yield too much results. But anyway, unlike the opposition, we need to fight on. We need to bring uh, all those data sets together for you. India today's biannual survey with C voter, which is telling you just ahead of the general elections what will happen in state by state to give you the big picture who's winning the battle for 2024. We spent the first hour dealing with the North Indian states. We'll now switch to the south. And remember, Rajdeep, there's been this big north versus south uh, effort that the opposition is making to try and build a narrative around how North Indian states are different from South Indian states. Do South Indian states truly feel and vote differently, we'll find out in this hour. Remember, we've given you the North India numbers in the first hour. 154 of the 180 seats going to the BJP-led NDA. India Alliance, just 25 others won. So there's a North typhoon. What's happening in the South? Is there a hurricane the other way around? Let's start. India may cyclone aata hai, sir. Cyclone, okay. The Southern Cyclone. Sorry, the Southern Cyclone in, and there are cyclones that take place in south of the country. We're starting with Karnataka, a state which, remember, went to the polls seven months ago in Vidhan Sabha. And interestingly, this is what it's showing. In terms of vote share, the NDA is way ahead of the India Alliance. Remember, there's a Congress government in Karnataka. 53% at the moment to the NDA, 42% to the India Alliance, others five. This is identical in vote share compared to 2019. How is this translating into seats? Remember, 28 seats in Karnataka, 25 were won by the BJP last time. And we are saying the BJP is down just one, 24. From, remember, 27 now includes the JDS, which has joined hands with the BJP there. So the J, BJP, JDS, 24, that's down three, but they're still holding its own. India Alliance, just four in a state where the Congress is in power. And India Alliance means effectively Congress here, others zero. So you've got the first southern state giving bad news to the Congress party. And Raj Chengapa, it's your home state. So why don't you kick off? It suggests very different verdict to what we saw seven months ago when the Congress won pretty decisively. But let's say, Rajdeep, it's not surprising in Karnataka. It's if history. you recall, it, 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 it started from Karnataka when uh, Rajiv Gandhi swept Karnataka, winning, winning about 26 or 28 seats in, in 84. 84. Within three months, Ramakrishna Hegde was elected as chief minister. We're going to see the reverse uh, polarization happening in this case, where for Karnataka, they felt that the Congress was good, it was needed because the BJP government was not effective, and therefore the voters likely to tilt towards the, giving Modi the mandate, because he did campaign extensively there. He did push, if you remember the final phase, a certain percentage up over there. So Karnataka and the other thing BJP has smartly done 
is tied up with the JDS. JDS. So the Wokliga vote, which would have made a decisive difference in Old Mysore and others, is getting split across these two. And secondly, if you look the way they have mended fences with the Lingayats, bringing Vijayendra, who is the son of uh, uh, Yadurappa, into the picture, the BJP has tried to cover its flanks. But let us see. I mean, Shiv Kumar is a wily uh, contender. And you might see a little more seats going this way towards the Congress, if I, I mean. So, Yashwant, given the fact that Siddharamaya and Shiv Kumar were in Delhi, and now you've got uh, DMK ministers, you've got Pinari Vijayan trying to hit out at the center for not giving enough uh, finances to the South, could that potentially become an issue? Because I was seeing in the South, there was a lot of traction, at least in social media, around this issue. As of now, it's just in its infancy. Could it build into a bigger headache for the BJP in the weeks to come? Uh, possible uh, because you see without the JDS BJP was in deep trouble and they were pragmatic enough to take that much of arithmetic along six months back our the same MOTM was showing BJP was in disarray because 10 percent approximately JDS votes of Vokaligas going along that now but that's the thing largely, is, in old largely in old Mysore but the thing is that it's not just like they, it might be decisive in old Mysore but there are pockets in across Karnataka particularly in North Karnataka where even five to six percent of Vokaliga votes shifting the BJP way will do the magic however the point which you are making is a north versus south device and the campaign that we are now watching in uh, in in social media that is an uncharted territory because I don't think any election whatsoever in the last 75 years, that play has been there. Barring the Tamil Nadu politics, outside that, the north-south divide was never played like that. Uh, so that's we, important. Yeah, it's uh, very and, and, important. And this to issue understand. is still just about it's germinating. It's just grow, germinating. Amita and we Tiwari, need to look is there a seamless that. transfer of votes from the Janta Dal secular? Uh, to the BJP or do you think it might seem like that but on the ground it's not so easy to transfer? See, JDS vote is largely anti-Congress vote. See, the regional parties have been born out of anti-Congressism. And if you see the gap between India bloc and the NDA bloc, it's 11% and which, out of which 9% is largely JDS. So JDS has, has pockets of influence in not only the old Mysuru but even the Bangalore region. There the implementation of schemes has been very good. And Congress is trying to project the Karnataka model as their model. But historically, BJP has been strong in Karnataka. From 1919 to 2019, they have won all the elections barring 1999. And surprisingly, BJP today, even in 2019, is the single largest party in South of India. Because South of India, there are regional parties who dominate and not the Congress party. Sure, and that's also primarily because they won 25 seats in Karnataka yes. last time. So, Rahul Verma, let's come back to our debate that we had when we discussed Delhi. That the same voter who seven months ago voted for Congress, possibly Siddharamaya as CM, apparently seven months later wants Modi as PM. As Raj Chengapa said, it's not unusual, but it seems to me the one state where it's pronounced in the south is in Karnataka. See, I... Modi is one of the biggest vote aggregators of our time. There's no doubt about it. And he pulls BJP's vote. He's more popular than the party itself. If BJP gets around 37% vote, Modi's popularity rating would be around 45-50%. So that means PM pulls the party. What I was trying to differ with, that the segment which changes vote into election is smaller than the claim that we try to make. Right. And think of it, like uh, Yashwan pointed this out, six months back, after the, like, when, so Karnataka elections happened in March, and the last MOTN had happened around August, BJP was not doing that well. See, what BJP is doing in every state where they were having trouble is making efforts, right? In Karnataka, they tried to get JDS. They made uh, a pact with Lingayat. On the other hand, and again, in Karnataka, what Amitabh had said in the beginning, the challenger is Congress. Congress seems not to be doing enough efforts in places where it's strong and credible. No, but uh, also opponent. imagine Sanjay Kumar, despite being the mighty force that they are at the moment, the BJP is willing to tactically cede ground everywhere. Yeah. And, you know, and even also, in Western and also, Uttar Pradesh to a party like the RLD, to the JDS where they think that they can make inroads so, in old And, and also Rahul, they called the JDS, uh, they called Kumaraswamy corrupt and a dynast. 
I mean, there was, it was very clear, we will never touch the JDS. You'll read, recall, no, they called Mukul Sangma that. all kinds of things till the day yeah. the numbers so, so, came so out, the, the then they changed their mind. So the level of flexibility yeah. is very we great. Uh, you, yeah. you know, Sanjay Kumar, because this was one of the states where there was a potential double-digit loss for the BJP. So and also, also look at the irony. The party that is supposed to have the ideology shows political dexterity. The party with no ideology, so to speak, in terms of certain core philosophical issues is very rigid when it comes to tactical alliances, Sanjay Kumar. Uh, I think the, the problem with the Congress is that it is slow in taking initiative, I would say even lazy in taking initiative. And if you look at the BJP on the other hand, even if they realize that they are going very strong in 2024, but they don't want to leave any chance. And my own sense is that if you talk to any BJP leader, they are pretty sure that they are winning 2024. But why they are entering into all these alliances despite ideological differences, despite having, you know, given strong statement against the leader of those parties, is that they want to make, they want to big win. They don't let, only want to big 2024. Let's take that, let, let's take that just a minute. Too. I'll come to you, Rashid, the moment. Mohan Kumar Manglam, national spokesperson of the Congress, Ajay Alok of the BJP. To both of you, first to you, Mohan Kumar Manglam. You know, there's so much of talk of the Karnataka model. That the Congress is saying the guarantees that we have given will win us an election. The numbers at the moment are so, showing, at least in a Lok Sabha, that's not working. I spoke to Mr. Sidharamaya only yesterday. He seemed very confident. He also play, is playing this sort of discrimination against Karnataka card. But at the end of the day, our numbers are showing the BJP virtually repeating its performance of 2019, which would be hugely significant. If your numbers do bear out, Rajdeep, it would be hugely significant, no doubt. Um, but I think your survey was conducted between December, mid to January end, if I'm not wrong, which is at the height of the Ram Mandir propaganda craze that happened. And everything online, everything on TV, everything you turned on any channel was about the Ram Mandir. So I think definitely that sort of hysteria would have been captured somewhere in your survey. I don't think that they would find it easy to maintain that kind of momentum going forward. Uh, the other thing is the arithmetic of JDS plus BJP might look right, but I don't think the chemistry works at all. Just for example, uh, Kumarasamy was in a rally with the BJP and was wearing a saffron shawl, I think, and uh, the senior patriarch Devagoda came out and said that it would have been better had he been wearing JDS colors. So even something as small as that could be a flashpoint for misunderstanding between the two. The third thing is, you know, you have this national um, narrative of the BJP that is against nepotism, dynastic rule, etc. So I'm wondering how they're going to reconcile that with pushing Vijendra to the front as sort of the face of their party in Karnataka. You just can't reconcile the two in a national election. Uh, and like I said, alliances, whether that be with the JDS or with someone else, they don't really... Vote transference is going to be one of the major issues to watch out for in there. Ajay Alok, on Karnataka, the transferability of votes from the Janta Dal secular to the BJP and vice versa, the Congress would hope that that might not be easy. We saw in the last elections, but also the JDS's vote is typically an anti-Congress vote. It didn't happen when the Congress and the JDS were together. That's the concern. Will there be transferability of votes? Or do you think, especially in old Mysore, the BJP is now seeping the idea that it's okay to vote for the Kamal and that helps the BJP in a 15-20 year horizon as well, build in the one region where they have weakened Karnataka? See, one thing they are conveniently forgetting, that Congress snatched almost 6 to 7 percent of JDS votes in the last Vidhan Sabha election, but they were not able to snatch our votes. Our vote percentage was quite the same, 36.2, what we got and what we got in the last assembly election. And JDS vote bank significantly reduced from 19, 20 percent to 13 percent, and this was majority or majority vote completely, it was minority vote which shifted to the Congress. Now there is, a there is a feeling of angst and there is a feeling of appeasement everywhere in Karnataka and w w how the Karnataka government is performing since they have uh, formed the government. So there is a natural chemistry and a monomy between JDS and the BJP and BJP and JDS combined together we are crossing 50% mark very sir, easy. Sir, sir, with due regard, and with sir, the dynamism with, and with the uh, uh, Ajay, Ajay, momentum Ajay, of the election regard, going on. Sir, sir with due regard when you say natural chemistry seven months ago you were name calling each other. I mean, you were calling him a dentist, you were saying their family is corrupt, the Gouda family is corrupt. This was, all your top leaders were going to Karnataka and saying this. So, is it that you've decided 
चुनाव के लिए कुछ भी फगेट द पास्ट वी हैव टू विन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर सी चुनाव के लिए कुछ भी नहीं वी आर अ पोलिटिकल पार्टी एंड वी हैव टू लुक एट द सिचुएशन एट द ग्राउंड एंड ऑफकोर्स वेन वी आर नॉट विथ जेडीएस वाई वी शुड हाईलाइट देर प्रॉब्लम एंड वट देर करप्शन इश्यू वर्स द कांग्रेस विल ऑल्सो डू द सेम Now, Now not corrupt. India with us, we have to see, look at the ground reality of the what kind of appeasement politics, what kind of appeasement politics is being followed in Karnataka, and that. No, are they are they now not corrupt? My direct question to you is: JDS not corrupt now? Is JDS now no longer dynastical? Well, it is dynastical. As far as corruption, the matter goes, it's all in the court. If they are convicted, they are corrupt. and jds okay. is there mystical there is no doubt about it we are having a strategic alliance with them they are not merging into bjp yes and yes uh, uh, rashid kid why you wanted to make a yeah. point i think rajdeep if uh, uh, yashwant deshmukh's figure come true in uh, karnataka this would really reflect mood of the nation here is a you know government which is a proven track record uh, performing well the congress party there is there on the ground it's not a lazy party at least in karnataka and in spite of that if they lose and lose badly that will tell you a mood of the nation a pro modi wave second thing is it will also create a huge political upheaval you remember there was a lot of rivalry going on between siddaramaiya chief minister and dk shivkumar and this will you know become a big big issue so that so i think the possibility of, of that government fall, either fall falling fall. as it did after 2019 or are you saying there could be a change in chief minister these numbers hold? all kind of possibilities are there if this happens then then uh, i don't see future of for uh, siddaramaiya government there okay from karnataka let's come to telangana i'm just trying to keep it moving so we'll be able to give enough time because otherwise we have very irate uh, viewers in a particular state that this is how important our state is and you didn't give us enough times so let's just try and keep it moving let's come to telangana we look at the vote share numbers for telangana first and then the seat share numbers so in telangana the bjp thinks they will be able to gain ground they had uh, four seats the last time so when we look at the seat share for the bjp in telangana uh, a poll is predict predicting 21% just marginally up 1% up from the last time uh the big jump here is for the congress which was at 30% last time this time at 41% uh, whereas uh the brs and the other parties which includes ovc coming down to 38 from 50% the last time so the big change really is the bump in the fortunes of the congress and the decline in the fortunes of the brs how does this translate into seats the one the only sliver of hope that we're seeing of all the numbers that we've put out so far in the mood of the nation opinion poll are actually coming from the 17 seats of telangana where the congress's tally is expected to go up from 3 potentially to 10 that's up 7 from the last time the bjp was at 4 could come down to 3 that's down 1 the brs was at 9 could come down to 3 that's down 6 the aimm stays where it was the last time so ovc wins his seat um uh, 3 to 10 now from what i know amit shah and the bjp big guns will be figuring out some way ki inko ye 10 nahi deni hai inko kuch nahi dena hai bhai you know uh, rahul the fact is honeymoons do exist you know i know that we are in a world where even live in relationships are now looked at with the question mark but a honeymoon is still fine or in the poll the honeymoon is yeah. on uh, whether it will be on in may or not we don't know this is the one state where at the moment yashwant's poll seems to suggest that the honeymoon is on they just won an election what two months ago and uh, therefore there isn't even enough time for any anti incumbency as of now to build that's the sense i get yashwant that's, am i right because that, in the contrast with karnataka here seems clear Uh, where the Congress is still very much the new party that has just toppled a ten-year-old uh, government. I think Congress is reaping benefit of the popularity of Ravan Reddy. I think what is happening here is that in absence of any national leadership popularity or popular national leadership, Congress has to now look around for the popularity of their local leaders. And this is one state where definitely the popularity of Ravan Reddy no, is. So why is it working in Telangana but not Karnataka? It's not working simply because we have got two popular contenders, and uh, Rashid Bhai might be able to tell this, but I am dead sure that uh, the Deputy Chief Minister of Karnataka would not like Congress to win in Karnataka in Lok Sabha election because if Congress loses Karnataka in Lok Sabha election, that paves the way for him to become the Chief Minister. I think this is a bit uh, 
unfair because Mr. D.K. Shukumar and Rajdeep would correct me if I'm wrong, played a very big role even in uh, Telangana, the amount of you know, efforts he made there. So he's a, so far he's a disciplined soldier of the Congress. But, but uh, le let's be very clear, it appears one regional party is the one completely getting squeezed out here. Chandrasekhar Rao has virtually gone dormant since that defeat. That vote, the Congress seems to have captured to a, last, a large extent if these numbers hold. And the BJP has its pockets in, in uh, Telangana, but has not been able to truly spread across the state. Would that be a fair understanding, Amitabh, of these numbers? Yeah, I see. In a, in a largely bipolar national election, the regional parties tend to get squeezed out, and Telangana is one of the states. But it reveals a very fascinating insight is that Congress, wherever is it, is it gaining, it is gaining at the expense of regional parties, and that is the basic problem in that India alliance. It is gaining at the expense of BRS and not BJP. So how can it lead an alliance of regional parties where the regional parties have been formed out of anti-Congressism? TMC has come out of Congress. YSRCP has come out of Congress. SP has largely done anti-Congress politics. But, but it also shows uh, uh, there is no substitute for hard work on the ground, Rahul Verma. The fact is the Congress in Telangana genuinely made an effort in the last one year or 18 last six months. months. Yeah, I mean, six after months, the Karnataka but to election. be fair, you know, after Karnataka, they got momentum, Rahul. But there was a sense that the Congress in Telangana was slow, slowly at least, they were, they were there on the ground. They were more visible after Karnataka, no doubt about that, Rahul. But I think, would it be right to say that there is, there is a lesson there? You work hard on the ground, you throw up a leader like Revan Reddy who's able to connect and maybe, just maybe, who knows where the future is? I, Telangana has been a Congress state. Indira Gandhi contested from Medak all those years ago. Uh, but at least in Karnataka and Telangana, you have a party on the ground. We all are taught this lesson from childhood that you have to work hard to get something, right? So, it's, for a, huh, so, so, so it's not just for politics that you have to work hard. Sometimes, see, Congress also, not just because of the hard work in Telangana, but also some of the mistakes that BJP as well as BRS made in Telangana, which gave that kind of edge to Congress uh, in Telangana. And of course, Revanta is now very, very popular. BRS is not picking up from the defeat uh, it faced last time, and that's the advantage they are getting. And BJP has still not been able to figure out what its Telangana strategy is going to be, unlike in other states. So are they going to make efforts as they did in Karnataka or Maharashtra or Bihar uh, in Telangana or not? So that still remains to be seen. It, that's interesting, Raj Chengappa, because, you know, the, the BJP has also been caught in Telangana between do we play OBC politics, do yes. we project an OBC leader, what, you know, do, do we take strident anti-Muslim politics, will that take us forward? Somehow, for all the gains they made in Telangana five years ago, they've remained stagnant, one of the few states where they've not, you know, uh, multiplied overnight. I think the BJP is still shell-shocked by what happened, and the way the Congress came in and snatched what they thought was their territory, because KCR was on the decline, and the Congress smartly moved in uh, and got, got the prize. But I just want to make a larger point, which we did in passing reference, and we talked about, and uh, Rajdeep, you talked about, I, I think, this, is this whole thing that uh, Siddharamaya and uh, Shivkumar came to Delhi for, and you've seen these full-page advertisements about the South being neglected, not being given the due in terms of its money that was there. I think that is a potent force as it gets along, because it's also tied up with delimitation in some senses. That somehow the South is performing very well. Andhra's, I mean, uh, 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 Telangana is one of the states. Karnataka we talked about. And yet, you know, so this kind of thing can begin to erode on the Modi wave factor. That no, so it is an idea. There can be no doubt about it. But does the opposition have the wherewithal to mount it into a meaningful idea, take it down to the ground in the weeks before polling? No, I'll give you a very interesting example. Mr. Pindrai Vijayan is in town today. He led a protest. The right. Congress decided not to join it because the left is their prime opponent in, in Kerala. So there are internal divisions. But when I asked Mr. Sidharamaya, he said, yes, we would like to hold a convention of all the southern chief ministers soon. So they will play this no, card. And at least it's it. a card Sir, with some emotional connect. No, no, but there. it's also Picho Suja. It, like, it's a real last minute kind of idea, sure. right? You To be able to take this idea, build it into something big, requires some time. But, but, and but, and, but and the other one is... It's idea to begin with. You are only two months away from the election. Even if you play it well, South is only 130 or 140. No, but in, in those states, it may do well. Uh, Rahul, no, but can I just make a point? 
if uh, in Karnataka they have, uh, you know, swallowed the <laughs> poison chalice and some, you know, had to drink from that one, it is because they know that if they lose Karnataka, the BJP, the sole Modi wave that begins to shrink, because at 25 seats, it is the one that tilts decisively uh, in terms of, you know, if moving from, say, whatever figure that they have now, if they are 303, if it starts dropping like they had last yes. time, they yes, lose a lot. Chakabha, so that is why you see because that I they are so concerned. Look at the, the, they are willing to compromise, whether it is in Bihar, as we've seen, in any of these places, despite the fact that they seem invincible, the BJP is insecure for whatever reason, and it is showing up in these places. I actually don't think it's insecurity. I actually now am convinced the BJP, as you saw with Mr. Modi talking about 370 and 400, it's like pushing your troops to try and conquer what is seemingly impossible. So you say Karnataka, okay, people are saying we are going to lose there, put all your okay. might in Karnataka. Well. The okay. Prime Minister's repeated trips to the south at a time when, you know, you would have thought they would say, okay, south is an area where we will not do well, suggests that actually they think south is a growth area. Here's so a it's fascinating. Is, okay, but, so one, Rahul, one seemingly impossible thing, seemingly impossible, but why not? When you are talking about the possibilities, if the BJP can go all the way to bring the JDS, if the BJP can go all the way to bring Nitish Kumar, why nobody is talking about possibility of BJP and BRS coming together? Look, the BJP How at the moment, zero plus zero. the BJP is hunting for allies all over. The BRS is a potential ally, but I think, I think they see Telangana as one of the states where they want to grow in the future. And the, to grow, they have to finish the BRS. See, once the regional party is finished, Make it BJP versus Congress in Telangana, advantage BJP. So that's the one reason why they may hesitate from taking on the BRS. And Chandrasekhar Rao is a wily leader. But I think Kumar uh, Swami is just Rajdeep, Rajdeep, But Rajdeep, no, correct me, Raj. No, I just as, want to make a yeah, quick yeah, point yeah, to yeah. what you made. Yeah. The fact is that Modi came into uh, Telangana for an election campaign and said that KCR approached yeah. him for, to help out his son and uh, you yeah. know, the, so Joined there was India. this talk of an alliance that was building over there yeah. and of course uh, as we've seen they've patched up with JDS exactly the point which I Telangana is fascinating but we need to move on because otherwise we'll get caught in the politics of one state and then people in Andhra will start feeling bad and that's never a good idea when you're discussing Telangana and Andhra Pradesh. So Andhra Pradesh on your screen next. 25 seats here. I look at projected vote shares first. Uh, the YSR CP of Jagan Reddy had 49% vote share last time. That's projected to come down to 41. That's 8 down from the last time. But the TDP, which was at 40% the last time, is now expected to go up to 45 Remember, we had uh, Chandra Babu Naidu meeting the Home Minister recently. Are they picking up signals which before this poll the others hadn't, but BJP obviously had its own polling on the ground. Uh, the BJP had very little vote share, it's just marginally expected to go up. The Congress had very little vote share, marginally expected to go up. But the big change there is for the first time, we are seeing the vote share of the YSRCP since Jagan led his party to power after that famous uh, Padyatra lesser than the TDP, a 4% gap, converted into seats. Fascinating here, very, very fascinating. Because remember, Chandra Babu Naidu was really given the rough end of the legal stick recently. And there's a lot of talk amongst the TDP supporters that there is sympathy on the ground there. That is reflecting in the numbers for the first time. Because from zero, the TDP is projected to go up to 17. If you ask me, of all that we've seen, this is the one number that pops out of the screen grabs my attention. You know, my, my sense is uh, uh, Mr. Amit Shah has uh, got a sense of what Yashwant Deshmukh's poll was suggesting. Because why is no, it? Sanjay Kumar is surprised. You know, He's because, a ulta because, because, because you've got, before I tell you, know, because you see Chandra Babu yes. Naidu no, was there. Clarification, and, Rajdeep. Yes. Is TDP only TDP or? Is TDP Jan plus Janasena, obviously. TDP plus Janasena. Is it Janasena yeah. also? Yeah. In yeah. TDP but, but you see, the thing is that you've got a party where whose leader, Chandra Babu Naidu, has been knocking on the doors of the NDA for months now. And the NDA wasn't opening the door. Suddenly at the Ram consecration ceremony, you see Chandra Babu Naidu there. Now Chandra Babu Naidu has come back to Delhi and apparently there are two views within the BJP. How far should you go to completely embrace him? But I think the BJP wants to be clear. They want to be with the winning side in Andhra Pradesh. And the Andhra side also wants to be with the, with the BJP because you need help from the center. So if these numbers are right, 
One of the alliances we could see in the next couple of weeks is TDP. No, but Jatsena remember, Jagan is also meeting Amit Shah. So now we don't know. I'm, I'm the, just saying these numbers. These the numbers BJP has put, both the Andhra balls up in the air. They can decide where they want to go. No, the thing is that BJP cannot decide who forms the government in Andhra because I think the the real battle there remains Chandra Babu versus Jagan Rahul. But with these no, but numbers, what, the BJP will be changed? tempted to go along with Yashwan Deshmukh. This is. The most fascinating yeah. insight of all that we've seen so far. The Telugu Desam, where many people had started writing the obituary of Chandra Babu, political obituary of Chandra Babu Naidu and his party, pops out. Jagan Reddy, who so far is busy, and I'm sure he'll be watching this, so we should be just slightly mindful of what we say, busy projecting invincibility is suddenly seeming on uh, shaky ground. And how does this then impact potentially the assembly election, which will also be held at the same time? I think the problem what Jagan Mohan Reddy is facing, not that his own personal popularity has taken a hit. I think the problem is there is a huge number of non-performing MLAs and MPs. The anti-incumbency at In the micro level. In your view, is the assembly level. mood also the same? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's what is happening right now. You're so sure about Unless they, he changes no, big No, because you don't of, know for sure, because yeah, this is a Lok Sabha poll. Yeah, that's what I'm but saying. But do you think it indicates assembly that, mood also? I'm getting the indication of that same as well. Unless he changes huge number of sitting <laughs> MLAs, you know, chops the tickets and gives fresh faces. He has a problem even in the assembly. What's gone wrong for him? You met him recently. You know, what would have suddenly gone wrong? Because this was not the situation in the last MOTN. So it's obviously changed just in the last six months. Look, the fact is, Andhra polls have always been closely competitive. Even when Jagan lost in 2014, yeah. it was a very wafer-thin very margin, especially in terms of votes. So both sides have strong vote bases of their own. If the Kapu vote which comes in through a Jan Sena gives you an accretion, it helps Chandra Babu Naidu. My sense is I would not write off Jagan Mohan Reddy. He's done a lot of welfare schemes. He's banking on welfare schemes, uh, you know, the sort of Modi model taken into the Labharti model at the state level. But there is also a sense that many of his MLAs have been distant from the voters, have either been accused of local level corruption. He's changing 60 MLAs out of 150 that he won. So there's a clear sign that he also recognizes local anti So I have a theory. When if it's like, if it's as tight as this and the TDP is bouncing back, whichever side aligns with the BJP, potentially Amitabh Tiwari has the advantage in Andhra Pradesh. Would you no, agree? With one, with one caveat, with? before you go to Amitabh, then remember there is a solid 8 to 9% minority vote that's Muslim, plus a large Christian vote out there. And in a way, many of Jagan's advisors have been telling him, let Chandra Babu go with the BJP, it'll allow you to consolidate that's that vote. But so it's a, it's a but gamble. Counter, but yes, counter but to that, I mean, there's another set of data, which generally, I mean, I, I keep on mentioning, I mentioned you uh, Punjab, Tamil Nadu and Kerala. I did not mention Andhra Pradesh in that. Even though Congress and BJP both are out of equation in Andhra Pradesh, but Pradhan Mantri Modi's personal popularity in Andhra Pradesh is way, way more than Rahul Gandhi's. So what I'm simply trying to say, even though BJP has no equity whatsoever uh, over there, there are certainly emotions attached on the Congress, anti-Congress, and the old fault lines that the political fault lines are. And one recent development is... Jagan Mohan Reddy's sister going to Congress. Now, if from here onward, Congress gains by virtue of Karnataka and Telangana just even two, three points, that entire vote block is going to come from the Jagan Mohan Reddy right too because they share the same vote. Amita, so, so the yeah. Congress jump is only going to damage Jagan. See, BJP has a problem of plenty here. So it will choose whichever party is going to con uh, win more num or higher number of seats. However, as you mentioned, Andhra is one of the few states where simultaneous elections already take place. And generally what happens is that whatever is the result in the Vidhan Sabha election is reflected in the Lok Sabha election. Andhra 2014-19, Telangana 2014, Odisha 14-19 and Sikkim 14-19. So this could be reflective also of the YSRCP facing pressure or anti-incumbency even yeah, I can at the tell you one event. thing very clearly. Chandra Babu Naidu is going to be on India television very soon. The TDP already picking up these numbers. They are flying with them. This, and frankly, yeah. Rahul Verma is the first piece of good news they've had for a party. And I think this is where legal overreach always is double-edged. You, know, you yep. think you're killing your enemy. Mm. It can potentially create sympathy and can help your opponents bounce back. Again, uh, something you should know, right? Anyone who is in politics knows this. But then politicians also are humans. They have egos. They have anger, right? And they, in their overreach, 
try to do something which may backfire. So we don't know whether uh, 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 TDP's gain are actually coming because of that legal overreach. This might also be happening because Congress might be gaining certain votes, which is coming from uh, uh, Jagan's party. And no, no, but that's overhyped. From one, if they're going to three, that's only 2% up. You can say it's 2%, but the Jagan Reddy is losing 8% vote share. Only 2% uh, the Congress has sure. got extra from the last time. So remember, Jagan Reddy's graph at this moment is very clearly coming down. That's what this data represents. There's no running away from it. Mm. And uh, Chandrababu Naidu would be doing a bit of a dance right now, Sanjay. But BJP's overtures toward Chandrababu Naidu also reflects, you know, the BJP and Prime Minister Modi. He wants to get a foothold in, in, in southern India because, you see, if he's comparing himself with Jawaharlal Nehru, with Indira Gandhi, with Rajiv Gandhi, with his Congress Prime Ministers, you cannot be a Prime Minister of India and, you know, 107 feet out of his bounds. But it also shows flexibility again. Here is a leader who five years ago tried to lead the opposition charge against and Prime Minister you. Modi, spoke angrily against the Prime Minister. So, Nitish did five, the same. That, and, and, and you're willing to embrace them all. So I think the Prime Minister is very clear that in politics there are no permanent friends or enemies, something that the Congress could learn. Think about it, Jagan Mohan Reddy comes from a Congress family. What stopped the Congress in all these years from making at least one solid overture to him to try and embrace? What, what do you do instead? You send his sister to contest against him, which clearly for him is a red rag. You've actually, according to which he said in the interview to us, you've divided my family. So any question no, of his him, family is already divided. But no, the fact of it, no, one minute. What stops the Congress? It's been 15 yeah. years now almost since Jagan left. You could no, have made an ego. There's a difference. Yes. No, my you know, point the, is home the, the Home Minister Raul, often the says that he's ready to make that extra no, because, step of because, flexibility. Because the Home Minister because often says, and the Prime Minister ED. believes this, that power we will implement our ideology in power. If we don't have power, how do we implement sure, it? Okay, but, 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 Rahul Gandhi says power is poison. I think that is the fundamental difference. Rahul Gandhi says power is poison. Rahul has made a very good point. You see, an ideological party, BJP claims to be an ideological party, but is a party of power. The Congress claims to be a party of power, but is now under Rahul Gandhi trying to become a party of ideology. You know, that I want people who are going to fight the RSS, come what may. So you've got a remarkable shift where the BJP wants to be the party of power. And the other is a very big difference. Everybody knows what the BJP's ideology is. Half the congressmen don't know what the Congress's ideology is. They don't agree on the same ideology. So that's the reality. Let's also admit Congress does not have ED. Can Sorry? I, can I, can I, can the I Congress does not have ED. Sure, the ED is a factor uh, which we will discuss, of course, one, but that's a separate factor. One Go ahead. point about TDP. See, yes. in, even in 1999 and in uh, uh, 2014, TDP only came to power when it aligned with uh, exactly BJP. Point. So TDP right. never that's came to power. That's the point I was trying to make. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. TDP has yeah. 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 that's, that's a very remarkable point, mm -hmm. Rahul Oma. Thanks for putting it. Because in 1998 election, mm -hmm. in the undivided Andhra Pradesh, BJP on its poll almost 20% votes, which forced TDP to join hands with BJP, and he swept again in 1999. So he made a very remarkable point. Can I, Can I make a distinction? Can I make a distinction between yeah. Chandrababu Naidu and NTR? NTR had the power to win on his own. Chandrababu Naidu, when he took over the party, was not able to do that. That's the difference. Chandrababu Naidu was true. leader than that. NTR did not That's need allies. That's true. But every time he has, he has won, he has come along with the alliance of sure. the BJP. EDP that is two months ago was thinking of joining the India Bloc Alliance. After the 3-0 drubbing, hmm. it has again changed its mind. So the regional parties, Hawa Kidar Bair Rahi Hai, are very no. cognizant of this. And act. there's another no, little piece of trivia, Rahul. There are two wings of Prashant Kishore's IPAC. Yeah. One wing is with Chandrababu Naidu, and the other wing is with uh, Jagan Mohan Reddy. And, Kishore and uh, uh, a few weeks ago, Prashant Kishore was allegedly on a flight with Chandraba or uh, with Chandrababu Naidu or his son, and all speculation sort of uh, arose in uh, Andhra. Is he going to now align with Chandrababu Naidu? He says he's not. But uh, if these numbers are true, he clearly knows who's on no. the winning side. Jagan didn't give the NOC. But are you surprised with these numbers? Are you surprised at Actually. all with these numbers, Sanjay Kumar? Actually. No, about Andhra, we are all discussing TDP and YSRCP. But we are not discussing Janasena. I think Janasena is very important. If you just pull out Janasena from the TDP How much is the Janasena vote? It's roughly about 4.5%. Yeah, but but yeah. But if you pull out Janasena from the TDP, then Jagan Mohan Reddy is back in the game. That is so sure. It is a situation like Bihar. Nitish Kumar at the center. There are three, two other players. 
you know, like RJD and BJP on one side, whichever side Nitish Kumar goes, the okay. party is gets But it's fascinating. It, it is a fascinating I, I want to go across now to Tamil Nadu. And mm. Tamil Nadu is the one state where the UPA or the India Alliance, at least at this moment on the surface, looks uh, settled. The turbulence is on the NDA side because the AIDMK and the BJP are now separate just at this moment and this game is changing so fast that I don't want to end up saying something which makes us look silly a few weeks down when people look back because that's the way I think everything we're saying is just commentary at this moment. Things of course can change. So here is Tamil Nadu. I'll start with uh, the vote share numbers first. So the NDA uh, projected to be 15% vote share. The India Alliance from 53 to 47. This is largely the DMK and the Congress and some of their smaller allies. Now you've got the AI DMK in the others, uh, which is now expected, the others together are expected to be 38%. Let's look at way, seats, now, yes. So then a lot many smaller groups are there who are not yet aligned. DMK. So we do not know which side will they be in. So a lot of this. AIA DMK on its own is hardly about 30% at this point of time. So 8% are the others, 30% is the AIA DMK. Okay. Here is the conversion into seats. Now again, the second state where there is some good news for the opposition alliance because like in Telangana, this time of course is the India alliance. They had 38 seats the last time, <coughs> expected to go up to 39 this time. The BJP, while it may gain vote share, not expected to win seats in Tamil Nadu. And the AIDMK had just one seat, that too could come down to zero. So Tamil Nadu looking strong. Does the DMK stay fully with the Congress? Or could there be a twist in the tail there also? I think, Rahul, I'll be very surprised given the statements that Stalin has made at the moment that he will also switch sides. There's the ED factor that our friend uh, Rashid Kidwai mentioned. Yes, there are a number of uh, DMK ministers under the ED scanner. But I find it difficult to believe that it will happen before the election. What happens post-elections, we don't know. If the Congress completely collapses, many of these allies of the Congress today could go in different directions. But I think there's a general sense, and the poll may well bear it out, Yashwan, that these, this is the one state where the Prime Minister's popularity is much less than it is nationally, even though he's made the effort uh, repeatedly to go to Tamil Nadu to identify himself with Tamil culture, the Sengal, uh, when the new parliament was inaugurated. So the BJP, as always, continues to see Tamil Nadu as this sort of bridge too far, which they want to one day uh, conquer. But no, look at the effort I, he makes I, with the Kashi Tamil Sangha. Yeah, but I, my sense is the AI DMK's collapse over the years That's right. has, has only consolidated the DMK and has put the BJP in a difficult position. Do we try and occupy the opposition space or do we tie up with the DMK? Right. The Either ways, you know, the vote share increase is not going to result in the seat conversion. So is there a vote share increase substantially? Yeah, uh, yeah. It's, a, it's a vote share increase substantially. It could be further because, as I said, many of those smaller splinter parties might still go this way, that way, or the NDA. Way. We do not know. No, is uh, the BJP I, gaining or is the AI DMK gaining this plus it's 3%? The, it's the BJP gaining. AIA DMK is, not, uh, is going down and down and down all the way. And by the way, AIA DMK is counted in others in this uh, calculation. It's not in counted in the... NDA vote share for that. Uh, yeah. No, but so I mean, you're saying a 15. Per, just a minute. You're saying a 15 percent vote share is for the, a for BJP, the BJP vote share? and the other perceived alliance partners of the BJP, and that's not a very, very uh, uh, big number. I tell you why. In 2014. BJP actually contested with his alliance all alone, not being part of AIA, DMK or DMK, and they polled 18%, which is a decent enough number. But that vote share, just like Kerala, as I mentioned, BJP almost touches approximately 20% in Kerala. In Lok Sabha. But, in Lok Sabha, but zero seats. It doesn't really matter. Three states where Prime Minister Modi has actually bent over backwards, I would say, in order to accommodate the political sentiment, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, and Punjab, the gap is reducing. They are gr having a growth of organic level, I would say, but unlikely to convert into seats. Rahul, is there any possibility there's a buzz that the Prime Minister could contest from Kanyakumari as a second seat? No, so there's, there's a buzz that, you know, he wants to sort of, he wants to bridge the north-south divide himself. One seat in the north, one seat in the south. Possible? You know, but Rahul Gandhi also showed some sense of weakness when he picked Vainad. 
the Prime Minister may not wish to go only for the reason that if this North-South divide picks up mm -hmm. and for some reason they end up on a shaky ground, you don't want to expose the man who's supposed to be invincible to any form of threat. Therefore, will they take that risk? Yeah. No, they will go so. all out to shore up their fortunes in Tamil Nadu. Remember, the BJP is the only party at this moment which has a 20, 30 year horizon on things. When I speak to top BJP leaders about, say, the strategy for Tamil Nadu or say, why don't you just patch up with the AIDMK at this moment, it might make it easier. They're saying, you know, we want to end Dravidian politics, not just about coming to power at this moment, it's also about a larger political, social, ideological fight where we want to integrate the country. I mean, at least they're talking that language yeah. and then pushing in that direction. Raj, oh, now, like the Chinese have a 20, 30 year horizon, the Congress doesn't even know what they're doing tomorrow. Raj, where do you therefore see the DMK being? You know, if these numbers hold, the DMK will presumably be, if not the second largest party, certainly the third largest party once again. Does the DMK remain where it is with all the ED pressures that we are we speak about? Other allies are slowly drifting away from the India Alliance? Or is there, you believe, a chemistry with Rahul Gandhi and the Congress that Stalin intends to cement? I think you have to look at what he gains. If it's only the ED that is putting pressure uh, and how deep that pressure is, one has to look at. But funding, yeah, but fundamentally Tamil Nadu doesn't believe in this one nation, one party, one nation, one language. So there's been that protest going on from the 60s. The more the BJP tries to emphasize all these uh, things, and let's not forget uh, Prime Minister Modi had, you know, as part of the temple run, went right down to Tamil Nadu and done, did right. two temples out there to assure them that, look, the, we care as much, uh, not just of, uh, of the Ram Mandir, but all your uh, tradition and culture. So at the moment, I don't find a reason why Stalin should be switching Unless there's some inside information. No, also, about. given the comments that Uday, Uday Nidhi Stalin has made about Sanatan and, and, Dharma, I presume the BJP can't be then seen to be embracing them right away. Yeah, and the Tamil culture and the fact that anti brandmism had ruled for and continues to in many senses, it's going to be difficult for the BJP. It'll get this 10-15%. Mr. Modi's popularity is there and we need to see that. Okay, let's turn then to the final state uh, in our southern uh, sojourn, which is the lovely state of Kerala that often marches to its own beat. Take a look first at vote share. If elections are held in 2024, what happens in Kerala is the UDF, that's the Congress-led front, 46% vote share, LDF 32%, 14% back, NDA 17, others 5. How is this translating into seats? Well, it's virtually a repeat of 2019. Once again, a clear sweep for the Congress-led UDF. The best news for the Congress so far, apart from Telangana, is coming from Kerala. 18 to the UDF, just 2 to the LDF. But remember, both are part of the India Alliance. So, No, but it's a big change from 2020, Yashwan Deshmukh, where you had the LDF come back to power. Now you've got, for some reason, very clearly, in a Lok Sabha context, anti-incumbency against the left and very strong pro-incumbency against... Uh, uh, the Congress and if Kerala so, was India, yeah. Rahul Gandhi would be Prime Minister. Absolutely. If <laughs> Kerala was India, Rahul Gandhi would have been not only the Prime Minister, he would have been a Prime Minister with Rajiv Gandhi kind of majority. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, but having said that, uh, I think 2019 numbers also came after a victory of left front in the assembly elections. Right. And so that way, Kerala is a pretty much split vote. Because they are voting for assembly level separately and Lok Sabha level. No, but what explains that vote, Rajdeep? You know, it's very interesting. Uh, a few days ago, Kerala left leader told me, why does Rahul Gandhi have to contest from Wayanad? Can't he choose any other part of the country? We are his staunch allies in the India Alliance and he's coming to take us on in Wayanad. So I think there again, people... He looks like a strong force in Kerala. No, so therefore, you see, the Congress is seen as a national party in Kerala. The left is seen as the regional party of Kerala. Mr. Vijayan is seen as the prominent chief, uh, the number one neta of Kerala. There may be anti-incumbency brewing against him also after eight years in power. But I think the main reason is the belief that the Kerala voter sees the Congress as a national alternative to the BJP. GVL Narsimha Rao is now with us. GVL, the BJP was trying very hard to, on its own through the RSS to win something in Kerala. Yashwan's data suggests it's a bridge too far for this election. No, I, I think uh, we are very confident of winning some seats. I will not say we'll be a big force in this election because Kerala doesn't, uh, uh, election to election, the swing is not more than 2% or 3%. Kerala is a, is a state that moves very slowly. 
But certainly in this election, we will. We are confident of and winning. And what about Andhra Pradesh, seats. where the Home Minister and Nadaji met, <clears throat> both with uh, Chandra Babu Naidu, also meeting with uh, Jagan Reddy? What's cooking there? I, I think these are political meetings that happen during the election time. Khabar but dona, certainly, sir. no, I think uh, you won't, uh, until it is anything is final, I think you will not know. So you're flirting with both parties essentially? No, we are, you see, we have got support from both the parties as far as uh, parliamentary strength is concerned. Big, but as far as elections are concerned... But Naidu betrayed a, you, would you take him back? I think these are uh, decisions that party will take at, at, at the highest level.